microphone. Hey everyone, hello, hello and welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome. It's Sunday. It's time to crack on with some Warhammers. Yes, welcome one and all. It's Warhammer Sunday. That time of week when I crack on and do some building of my Warhammer Conquest minis to get them all out of the way ready for painting at some point. I kept, I originally said later in the year, but it's kind of already later in the year. So yeah, everything's kind of behind schedule now, thanks to Chocolate Velociraptor and everything else that's been going on. So at some point they'll get painted anyway yes welcome 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 it's sunday it's one of my typical shows where i do stuff for three hours very little probably uh, and you guys hang out in chat and generally have a good time if you are watching this i know you can see the archive chat here but you really should if you can come and join in the live chat you don't have to but there's a good bunch of people in the live chat and they'll keep you safe and protected and you have a good time and have a good laugh. So if you are watching this and you can't see where the live chat is, if any, all you can see is that, then just click on the YouTube icon that's down here in the bottom right hand corner somewhere. And that'll take to the YouTube page where you can join in the live chat. Yes, and you want to because it's awesome. Anyway, hopefully you can all see and hear me OK. Uh, quick shout out, as always, on one of my streams. Quick shout out to all the folks that make these content type things possible. First and foremost, my patrons and channel members. Uh, patrons at patreon.com forward slash model making guru and my channel members who support me directly on youtube massive thank you to those people because they pay my bills they keep the lights on they keep food on my table so massive massive respect and thank you to them i love you all dearly don't worry i love all of you you're all my favorite children i always say that you're all my favorite children but they're my favorite children that give me money so i love them even more some are more equal than others. <laughs> but massive thank you to those two groups. And also, of course, to my corporate supporters, emodels.co.uk and goblingaming.uk, your one-stop shops for all your tabletop and model-making needs. Yeah, check out the links in the description below for those guys. Uh, use those links that are down there because that will tell them that I sent you and I'll get some income from that. It doesn't cost you anything. Give that a go. But yes, massive thank you to all of those. Quick swig of the waters. Ah, water. And of course... Of course, of course, of course, I've got a lispy. Yes, Martha, welcome to Hanging House, sir. Everyone's equal in my eye. Yes, of course, <laughs> Gotham is here to monitor the chat for you. I do have the chat here in front of me, as always, so I can see what you're talking about, but when I have my, my visor, my helmet of seeing on later on, I won't be able to read any of that unless I look really closely, so it'll be a blur of text. If you want to catch my attention in chat, please do. It gives me stuff to talk about. Uh, just make sure you put your comment in big fat capital letters, the whole comment, so I have a chance to see it amidst all the blur. Uh, or if you want to, you can do a super chat, which is the little dollar symbol button at the bottom of the chat window. That puts your chat in a colour box and puts an animation. As you can see there, but it's not come up on screen yet. Give it 10 seconds. Any minute now. I'm holding my breath. Oh, it's too slow. It's too slow. Come on. Wow, I need to work on the delay on that. That's ridiculous. Anyway, yes, you'll see an animation in a minute. As more Drac has just done, thank you very much. Puts a little $10, uh, a little, it's not a little big, it's a big $10 super chat through. It says, bonus models for Fox. So massive, massive thank you, more Drac. Oh, where's my animation? There it is. Wow. Talk about, talk about more delay than the than Royal Mail. Blimey, Riley, flipping heck. Anyway, yes. So, yes, that's what a super chat. I don't have any chance to miss a super chat. But if you don't want to do that, don't worry. Just put your comments in big fat capital letters. I'll have a chance to see it. Because I can't... Once I've got my glasses on and I've got this on... Because when I do modelling, just so you know... Just so you know... These are my normal glasses. These are my... I'm making models glasses and I'm looking at tiny things with... Uh, these have got like three foot thick lenses on them. Because these are proper reading glasses. These are just my looking at everything glasses. But when I've got these on... And then I combine these bottle bottom glasses with this visor so I can magnify stuff because I've got old man eyes. That is like, that may as well be like a thousand miles away. It's like, bleh. I can't read anything. So capitals or super chats help. Anyway, yes, welcome, welcome. Uh, today we're going to be cracking on again, getting back on with our build of the Warhammer Conquests. Uh, today I have uh, issues 69. <laughs> Behave. Family friendly. Issue 69 uh, and issue 71 uh, to crack on with. I know I've skipped a few issues, but there's, uh, there's a couple of sprues that I'm not sure where I've put them. I know where they are, kind of, I think, but they're in a box that's under three other boxes. And I thought it's easy just to go through the next sprue I can grab. So I've got 69 and 71 because 69 is just one dude. So we'll get to that in a minute. But first, I'm going to quickly go through the chat and then, then. The reason I'm so far away with the camera is we have some mystery package times. Yes, we have. We have. 
a mystery package box. We have a mystery package package and we have another mystery package package that I think I know what that is. Uh, now there would be another mystery package that's coming from Simon Reynolds aka Kevin um, but I think his auntie hasn't posted it yet. It's probably still down in the living room because Simon's poorly sick at the minute and he's not able to get out and post stuff so his auntie's looking after him and posting stuff and I think she's I think it's still downstairs in the living room because she hasn't arrived yet. So. <laughs> Bless him. Uh, but yes, so we've got some mystery package. But first, let's have a quick look at the chat. Uh, we have uh, more Draca was the first one in. It says evening, morning, afternoon, all Sprue and Glue. Welcome Sprue and more. Nim is in again. Nim, welcome Nim. Just popped in. Welcome to everyone who's come over from Colin and Dave's uh, stream just uh, about 20 minutes ago. Uh, the Sunday Buddy Brunch Bill Buddy Br I, could, I always get the name wrong. Buddy Bill Brunch. Sunday Brunch. You know the one. Dave and Colin's uh, stream. I love watching that. It's great fun. Uh, so yes, welcome. Hi, Dave and Cole. So welcome to everybody who's come across from that. Dad at Scaly Models is one of your mods. Uh, hey, Dad. Says hello again. Your mods are lovely, delicate forest creatures that will keep you safe in all the worst weather. They'll keep you protected from all the nasty grooves that hang around in the woods and forests. They'll keep you protected at all times. But if you cross them, they will quite literally put you through a mincing machine, make you mince them out of your body into patties, cook the patties, feed the patties to lions. Then they'll hunt the lions, kill the lions, mince the lions, put them into burgers, feed them to whales, and then they'll fire the whales into the heart of the sun if you cross them. So don't cross the mods. But if you don't cross them, they'll be lovely and nice. They're like little delicate forest creatures. So do look after your mods and they'll look after you. I don't know where I was going with that. More Dracus Spur and Glue. Uh, we have uh, me, apparently. Uh, who else? Candy Brown from Mongo is in, saying hello to everybody. Uh, Spur and Glue is it. Spur and Glue. I've said Spur and Glue already. Uh, B3s again. Hello again, gang. What? Uh, we have Ray Aquilina's in from Malta. Hey, Ray. Welcome, welcome. Uh, the Drunk Works, Scott's in. Hey, Scott. Welcome. Ryan Dunbar. Hey, all. Welcome, Ryan. Wayne Haywood. Welcome, Wayne. Mark 3Bs. Not to be confused with B3, of course. Mark 3Bs. Uh, I've forgotten who B3 is. It's not the Better Business Bureau. It's Big Bob's Bounty. No, it's not. I don't know. <laughs> I've not forgotten. Uh, Wayne Haywood. <laughs> I think, if I remember rightly, three uh, B3, no, Mark 3, I've forgotten. Somebody changed the name because it was really long and they just changed it to B3 or B cubed. I've forgotten what the B, what the Bs were now. Remind me in chat what the Bs were. Uh, I'm, I'm losing the plot already. Wayne Hayward, uh, Mark 3 Bs. Eric Graham's in. Welcome, Eric. Uh, David Butcher, that model is in. Or oh, Dave, another one of your lovely mods. Well, it's Dave. I wouldn't say lovely, but Dave. Yeah, Dave's, Dave's nice enough. <laughs> Sorry, Dave, only joking. Uh, Dave, but that model is another one of your lovely mods. Bits Box Builder, you buffoon. That's the one, Bits Box Builder. I think it's because everybody was falling over themselves trying to say Bits Box Builder that he just changed it to B3. There we go. Which, of course, is Steve Mundy, which is gluing stuff together and making bits. I'm hoping that's my memory remembering that. I'm probably wrong. I don't remember anything about anybody. All you guys have so many different YouTube names that don't match your actual real names on Facebook in the boom hut that I get confused and I, I forget who is what and Bob Smith who might be action sniper on YouTube and something else on Patreon and I'm like I don't know who anybody is anymore I'm an old man and I shout at clouds and gardens confuse me I don't understand so I always apologize profusely if I ever get a name wrong because it's not it's not that I'm stupid it's just that well, I am stupid it is that I'm stupid but it's just, I have the worst memory in the world for names and faces and stuff now voices I can tell you a vo an actor's name by just hearing a small snippet of his voice, but give me a name and I can't remember who the hell that is. <sighs> Dad asks the important question, of course, what's on your bench and what's in your belly? What are you working on right now? Be it a model kit or a diamond art or a drawing or anything creative and crafty, anything craft based, creative based. What are you working on right now? And what's in your belly? What are you had for your dinner or what are you going to have for your dinner? Uh... Time for the queue, says more Dracca, and then Dad asks the question, then says thanks more. Phew. Uh, right, I've got, a, I've got a, a not a dribbly nose, but I've got a slightly moist nose today. So give me a second, just to unmoist. Put the lights on, you see. Right. Oh, sniffly nose. Mystery package time. Mystery package time. My God, I need to wipe my nose properly. It's just, oh, it's like I've uncorked something. Hang on. Oh, raging torrents. Woohoo! Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's better. Right, so we have three packages. I'm going to open the first one first. 
That's a kind of dumb, redundant statement. I'm going to open the first one first because this has come to me from Adam, who is also the raging modeler, who I don't think he's in chat at the minute. Oh, well. Uh, because he sent this to me months ago and it only just turned up about four or five weeks ago. And I've been waiting for other things like Simon's package to turn up so I could open them all together. Uh, but I'm just opening it now. It was, it was shipped on the 9th of June. Yeah, and it's like two and a half months later. So we have this package that has arrived. Now he sent me some bits and bobs, but we're way back in May and June. Uh, and then he sent me this. This turned up later because it was a bit. It was a a bit delayed. This has come from, as you can see, the Japan's because it says it says Japan right there, and it's got Japanese. It says customs declaration may be opened officially. Plastic model X one. Yes, but what is it? And it's been sent by a chap called Iko Tashita from Rize Next, Utani Bill Samurai Japan. Yes. So I have the official box opening knife. Are we ready? Three. See how they, I don't often do live package opening. So this is this. See how this behaves now. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. That was. Three, two, one. Oh, three, two, one. That's now gone forever. I don't. I just saw where that went. You'll never. I'll never see that again. Now. Oh well. That'll be me going around the back of the desk later on. God damn it. Anyway, there you go. So let's get this box open. I don't know what this is. I think he did tell me by accident. Then that was like two and a half months ago. And I don't remember what I did yesterday. Never mind. Two and a half months ago. So. Let us find out what what is in this box. I mean, obviously it says plastic model kit on it, so we can assume it's a plastic model kit. Me. Mystery pack is time. I shall take out any paperwork because you don't need to see my address. Uh, I'm not going to look at you because it'll tell me what it is. So we have in here. Ooh. <laughs> oh excellent it's not what i thought it was he has sent me he has sent me the mobile suit rx78 2 gundam it's the sd version the b is it bb century i think it's bb century uh sd gundam oh x oh x standard yeah x standard there you go now i thought let me just double check this because oh yes yes <laughs> awesome I've got a small collection of uh, EX Standard and BB Century kits that I need to get around to making at some point. I haven't got the RX-782. I've got a couple of strikes. I've got a couple of three packs of kits of strikes. I do need to get around to building these at some point. And common sense will tell me, because these are such simple little builds, I could save shelf space with the boxes of all these kits and just assemble them and then come back and take them apart and paint them later. But I keep forgetting that. Awesome. Now, I will be honest, I thought it was a model kit of a of a of a bowl of a pot of uh, start again i thought it was a model kit of a ramen pot i don't know why but in my mind it was like it's a it's a model kit of a of a, a ramen pot i don't quite know why i don't know why i thought that and maybe it was deliberate misdirection on adam's part awesome thank you very much for that that will get built and weathered of course nice lovely little simple builds these they're dead simple they're only they're all chibi and they're only dead straightforward but it means I can do very little building and then spend a lot of time getting all the weathering on that. Because you know I like to do all these things weathered. I do have a big backlog of gumpler I need to crack on with. Uh, and these will be a nice way to get me back into it. So thank you very much for that, Adam. That was very, very kind. <laughs> Doesn't come with the bendy light. Uh, these are lightsaber then. Beam saber though. But uh, you never know. You could heat it and bend it. That'd be cool. Awesome. That's the uh, So that's the RX-78-2. Uh, Gundam SDEX standard. I know it's EX and not X standard. EX standard. So we'll put that there. What's next? Next we have. In fact, I'm going to put that to one side because I know what's coming next. Now I know what this is. This is an unsquishy. Unsquishy. Uh, and I'm not going to go near this with the knife for a very good reason. Now this, I know what this is because this is something I've actually bought. Let me just make sure there's no documentations. Documentations! Hang on a second, chaps and chapesses. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Oh, yes! 
Yes. Okay. First of all, <laughs> first of all, I love this guy. Right. First of all, we have Anne T-shirt. Anne, wonderful T-shirt. I'll put the label inside. Craft Nation presents. That's it. It's just a nice black T-shirt. And it says Craft Nation presents. Now, some of you will know what this is now, and you'll be like, oh, some of you won't have a clue. I also ordered a couple of other things. I got a freebie as well. I got a couple of stickers, a free sticker, and a pack, a freebie, a pack of Tony, Tony Kakiri's original Creole seasoning. Oh, yes, it's a craftsman order. I placed a craftsman order from his Etsy store for a t-shirt and a couple of stickers. And I got a free steady crafting sticker and a free pack of Creole seasoning. He sends, he always puts a pack of Creole seasoning in with this, with his stuff. So awesome. Craftsman. Thank you very much. <laughs> Excellent. So I've got to find places to put these. One of these will go on the back of my iPad with all the other stickers in the world. Hello. Welcome to the Craftsman Show. My name is your host, the Craftsman. Alright. I love the Craftsman. If you've never watched the Craftsman, when you finish watching this, obviously, go and look up Craftsman. It's C-R-A-F-S-M-A-N. Craftsman. Just go and watch every single video on his channel. Maybe not the first couple because they've not he's not quite found his character, but go and watch every single video on his channel. You'll thank me. If you never watched it, just, you you'll thank me. Awesome. So I've got myself a new t-shirt because I'm running out of t-shirts. And some stickers here. I will not be giving stickers away because these are mine. 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 So I'm not giving those away. Yes. Yes. Craftsman. Craftsman. So we've got that and we've got the gun plaz. Now, Nim, are you paying attention? Because I think I know what these are. You'll like these, Nim. I think I'm going to look like a raccoon tomorrow, Scott. Oh, yes. I uh, hope you're okay, Dave. If you don't, if you're not familiar with Dave, David Butcher, that model, he's got himself one of them little scooter things that poodles along at 55 miles an hour i'm sure illegal but he gets away with it he fell off didn't like a spoon he fell off and fell into a bollard luckily he was being sensible and wearing a helmet so he didn't die but i think he's lost a couple of teeth and given himself a few bruises here and there oh oh, oh, oh. oh. okay not the color i thought but never mind oh. look at this these weren't supposed to be here till october are we ready? Are we ready? Is the dice dragon prepared? Can you hear this? <laughs> Three, two. I'm going to regret this. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, lovely. Now, I thought they'd be red. See, the weird thing is in the photograph, it said bright. The description said brown, but the photograph said red. The photograph was bright red, and I thought maybe they just got the colour wrong. They are brown, but you know what? They look like cola cubes. Oh, I've got a little bit moist. I don't know why. I don't know why. I, oh. Yes, if you remember in a couple of episodes ago, I was showing you the dice I got with Warhammer Conquest, and they're beautiful sort of translucent dice. Uh, and these are the only similar ones I found. Uh, they're just from a n other unknown Chinese manufacturer. I just found them on um, oh, on Amazon, not on eBay. Amazon, I think. And they're the same size, twenty five mil squared, obviously. I know fifteen mil. Uh, and they're the same sort of shape. They've got square red, square corners, and they're translucent. And when I eventually get round to playing uh, Warhammer, I've got the Warhammer Conquest dice, but you only have 20 in total, and they're beautiful, and I want to use them, but I can't use them and then some normal boring dice, because it looks stupid, so I've got these as well. So I'll probably get some more. I'll get some more colours, but that should be 100. I don't think there's 100 there, but... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... Okay, there might be 100 there. But I think you know, I've got 120 dice now, all of which are translucent poker dice, I guess. Casino dice. And they'll do me nicely now. So when I do eventually get to play a game, I'll have wonderful, wonderful translucent dice. I will try and get some red ones. I know um, I know Gaz Vickers is sending me his Conquest dice at some point. So I'll have another either 10 or 20. I don't know how many he's sending me. I'll have another handful of those. So I should have a good 104. I bet this is really annoying to listen to. Not my voice. I mean, well, I mean my voice is. I mean the dice. But I should have a good, goodly chunk of translucent square dice 
Measure them, Fox. Measure them. Go on, go on. <sighs> Hang on. Hang on. Where's me? There's my little ruler. <sighs> that will be approximately. If I go from there, approximately about three and a half meters by approximately uh, 2.7 nautical miles by one for the Americans 6.25 and 3 eighths with a sixteenth and half a cup of bale of inches as well so there you go all measured all the right size you should have counted the total of what you rolled Fox <laughs> yeah and everybody dies <laughs> Yeah. So I'm really happy with that. The, uh, Amazon says these haven't been delivered and they won't be delivered till October, apparently. But they've turned up like a week later. So yeah, so I'll probably order some more of these because I don't know what, I've never even played a game. But for some reason, the, the dice that come with Conquest, they just fill me with a massive desire to have more dice. So, and Nim likes to call herself the Dice Dragon because she plays D&D. And she's got a billion dice. And I know what you mean. You give me some really nice, really nice dice. This is die. And then last dice is dices, di, di, dice, um, and suddenly I want more, and I want them translucent. So they're not quite as shiny, but they'll do me, and they look edible. They're not quite like a cube of jelly, they're more like a cola cube, but you know what? It did say brown in the description, but the photograph showed bright claret red, so I'm a little bit disappointed. I can get more. Awesome. So there we go, that is today's mystery package time. I've got a few bits of packing I need to throw away, hang on, uh, get rid of that, get rid of that, there we go, right, so that's the mystery package time, so we've got dice, we've got, thank you to Adam for my SD Gundam, thank you to the Craftsman for my lovely Tony Cacheri's, there's original Creole seasoning great on everything, Tony Cacheri's world famous, it says in Italian, world famous original Creole seasoning is an extraordinary blend of flavorful spices prized by cooks everywhere. You owe it to yourself to experience how much it actually enhances the flavor of meats, seafood, poultry, vegetables, eggs, soups, stews and salads, even barbecue and French fries. There is no finer seasoning used at any time or anywhere on any type of food. That's my kind of ingredient. Put it on anything ever. I'm looking forward to that. And that's been handled by the craftsman himself. Yes. So awesome. I'll find somewhere to put those stickers in a bit. Yes, and I've got my t-shirt to wear later on. I'll put that there. So there we go. Thank you to Adam. Uh, what's this? Okay, that came with me dices. Thank you. Thank you so much for buying our goods as thanks. Here is this Japanese... What? Have I missed... All oh, right, it must have been in. This must have got caught in the box when uh, when he was packing it up for me. It's it's not in with this. So he's obviously got it himself. But when you order things from like little tiny Japanese stores, sometimes they include things like origami paper or actual origami. Here is this Japanese paper to make beautiful art on. We have the biggest selection of candies, so we look forward to seeing what you order next. There you go. And I, I don't see why I won't do it, so I'll put that there. If you've got a QR reader, you can't read it because it's out of focus. Never mind. Rize next. I assume it's Rize next and not Rise next. In uh, uh, in Saitamashi. Saitamashi Kitaku Miyano Miharachu in Japan. Saitamakan. That's my massacre in Japanese. Anyway, thank you for those wonderful gifts and for the things I've paid for. For the people that I've paid things for, thank you for sending them to me that I've paid for them. Uh, right, well, let's have a quick look at chat and then we'll crack on with some work. Uh, we have, we had the bench and belly question. Uh, let's have a look. You may notice, by the way, I'm getting towards the end of the conquest thing now. I had a little bit of a panic this afternoon because I can't find my thing now. I had a bit of a panic this afternoon because I thought, hang on, once I've done all the Warhammer conquest stuff, what am I going to do on Warhammer Sunday? I don't know. I really don't know because uh, I've, got, I've got some other bits I can build, but I may have to resort to painting on Warhammer Sunday and that's not good. Anyway, uh, right, Butcher That Model says, Bench is scratch-built doors, big dungeon doors, belly, nothing but soup for the next few days. Uh, name says, Bench knitting a small bag, just finished a speed paint, subscribe, 30 subs away from 100, lol, as for belly, tea and honey barbecue chips. 
Uh, do check out most of the way. Most of the people, I'm, my nose is running again. Most of the people that comment in my live chat, by the way, do have their own channels. So do feel free to go and have a look for channels in their name. Oh, hang on. Exploding nose. There we go. Do feel free to go and have a look and subscribe to people's channels. Uh, Mordraka says, Bench Chaos Cultist, Belly Chicken Enchi. Chicken enchilat enchilators, enchilators. You mean enchiladas? Or is enchilators something? I don't know what it is. It sounds good. Chicken enchiladas with six cans of Pepsi Max. That can't be healthy. Six cans of Pepsi Max. Uh, Ryan Dunbar says, Bench Micro Dwarf Bust. God help me. I'll read that again. Bench Miriko Dwarf Bust. I wonder what a micro dwarf was. Miriko Dwarf Bust. Uh, uh, belly, pulled pork and rice. Mm hmm. Mark 3B says, USS Constitution and the roast chicken with everything. Yes. B3 says, Belly was a late breakfast wrap, bacon, sausage, egg, hash brown and cheese in a tortilla wrap with brown sauce. Bench is the latest tank of hoverage and the Warhamster mech cut and shut. Yes. That Warhamster tank, if you've seen it in the boom hut, he's got himself uh, an FDK of Z, whatever it is, the half track, the German World War II half track. He's plonked, I think, a Predator turret on top, which looks awesome. I think it's a Predator. It's nothing to do with Baneblade. It might be a Baneblade variant. Looks like a Predator turret, uh, or the Repulsor turret, perhaps, with some extra big, massive plasma uh, cannon on it, and a big a ballistic cannon. Uh, and he's put bits all over it, and it's another hover tank, but it looks like it looks like it's got little stumpy legs, like a tardigrade. So I've decided to call it an, um, uh, what did I call it? A Wasserbeer, which is German for water bear. Because I said you should, shouldn't should make it hover tank, you should make it just those little legs. Little stubby, like a water bear with the, yeah. Tardigrade means wobbly walking or something. Wobbly feet. It looks cute anyway. It looks like more like something that would waddle than hover. Looks good though. Uh, Wayne Haywood bench many things and I can't decide what to do. Excellent. Ben, uh, belly traditional Sunday roast chicken. Cool. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Spruing, uh, that's not a thing. Uh, three nat ones in a row for knife opening. Lol. <laughs> I see Gundam. Belly, uh, Scott the junk, Junks at Works says belly leftover chicken satay and fried rice. Bench working on a small diorama for Postmanski Patsky's van. I'll, I'll read it out correctly. Colin didn't. <laughs> Postmanski Patsky's van. Don't give, don't give Fest the complicated words. He falls over. It's hilarious, but he falls over. Uh, made a bit of, yes, he's doing a little, uh, po he's doing a little sort of Russian themed Postmanski Patsky's van. Uh, uh, cool kit. I have the 200th anniversary SDRX 78.2 in my staff, uh, in the stash. 200th anniversary. 200 years old. Uh, da, 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 do. Candy Graham says the SD Gundam kits are really well done, fun to build, and great for panel line practice. I've got a selection of them now. I've got a Freedom. I think I've got a Strike. Uh, I think I've got a Freedom. I've got that one, RX seventy eight two. I think I've got a couple of other. Uh, I know. I know Vincent sent me some at one point, and I've got a few from other people. So I've been sent quite a few SD Gundams. I will get around to building them at some point. Uh, you're going to look like an even bigger plonker, says David Butch, that model, but I don't know who that's directed towards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, afternoon Crash Bandicoot, <laughs> says, says Scott to Dave, because he fell off his scooter. How do you fall? Hang on a minute. I couldn't stand falling off a bike and being injured, because it's like, you know, a few feet off the ground and you can go quite fast. How do you fall off a scooter that's that high off the ground? With, and uh, I, that's like saying I, I, I don't know. I, that's a, that's a that's a good hashtag team inept moment there. I think, but I'm just glad you're not too badly injured. Although if you don't whistle every time you say the letter S, I'm going to be disappointed. You want a popsicle? I can't do that voice. Uh, cola cubes, cola cube dice, nice dice. It's into zone. Hey, into zone. Are they 25 millimeter or half inch? They are numbers by numbers. Uh, you should have counted. I've done that one. You'd be okay that I normally take 80 dice and it's normally just about enough. Well, I will be doing an Imperial, uh, an Imperial Guard um, blob army. So I'll have a lot of Imperial Guard and Tempesta sounds eventually. So, yeah, I kind of need a lot of dice. Uh. Candy Graham says, lol, approximately is correct for large values of approximate. 
Now you need a velvet dice bag with a drawstring, says Dave. Don't know if that really fits with the Warhammer image. More like I need a, a, a an ammunition tin with... <laughs> like a proper... <laughs> open it up and my dice are there. The only thing is, though... Uh, if I go to a, if you get I've I've seen I've seen a video where the guy had like about 150 dice and they had a little tiny thing to roll your dice and he's like how the hell do I roll 150 dice in this poxy little box? You're gonna spend half your time you roll your dice and like a hundred dice roll out and you've got to spend half your time bringing them all back again and all the models get pushed off across the table. I don't know how it's gonna work. Uh, where are we? Did I miss the package? Says Chris at Gross Models. Uh, you did, I guess. Rewind it, Chris. It's a repulsor turret. I got it right. Totally scale models, so pop it and say hi, 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 totally scale models. 200th anniversary SD gun was the 200th model, not the 200th year lot. I was going to say, because they're only like 40 odd years old. Hi, Kenneth, Kenneth's in. I won't forget this week. Yes. Uh, it was outside the garage, Fox Oil or something on the road in the rain. Yeah, you sh yeah but it's like that far off the ground and they don't, you're not doing like 70 miles an hour. I don't know. I don't know. Need to build a dice tower now, Fox. Oh yeah, I know. I know. Hobby Zone actually do because I've got my Hobby Zone stuff here that you can't see. Don't know I'm pointing to. They do dice towers and they look like little castle towers. Uh, but yes, Chris, I got an SD Gundam from Adam. Thank you very much for raging uh, modeler. I got big bag O dice. Yeah, they're supposed to be bright red, but they're actually cola cube brown. But that's fine. They're translucent. And I got. I know you'll appreciate these. I know, I'm just, I know you've all just seen this, but I'm doing this for Chris because you didn't see it. I got, where's the, I can't, I got, it's all folded now. I got that, and I got that, and I got that, and I got that, and a packet of the Creole seasoning. Yeah, I got my Craftsman order. Hello. Yeah. So there you go. That's a quick recap for Chris because you missed it. He's at work, probably. Mm, I love that new t-shirt smell. And I'll be really sad now because I'll probably put that t-shirt on and it won't fit. And I'll be like, oh. I always get my size wrong. I don't know. Uh, right. Totally Scale Models says, question, does micro crystal clear? Hang on, hang on. Everything is available to hand you there. Does micro crystal clear set very clear as I need to glue a micro SMD to a clear bit of plastic and want it to shine through? Can't mount it on a piece of plastic card as I would for a three millimeter. Um, yes, it's basically PVA glue. So it'll dry as clear as PVA. All these kind of different, they're all basic variations on PVA glue. So yeah, it, it'll it, literally, it's crystal clear. Um, uh, driving some materials especially useful on clear plastic parts for nearly there you go especially useful on clear plastic parts for nearly invisible joints will not cause crazing of clear parts yeah it's absolutely fine for it uh, i mean even just pva glue is fine um excuse me yay personal unboxing very fast unboxing <coughs> excuse me i need to get some water in my throat num, 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 num. right so that's that bit done. Unboxing done. I say I'm, I was hoping to have by now had a package from Simon. But I think his auntie's still not posted it yet. So never mind. We'll crack on. I'm debating what to put my Creole seasoning on there. Mm. Mm, yes, I won't think about that. Right. Tell you what I will do though. While I'm here. Forgive me chat. I've just put your face down onto my bench. There's probably a bad thing about that. Let's apply a Craftsman sticker. This is my one of the places that all my stickers go is on the back of my iPad. <coughs> no, I can't see chat right now because this. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who lives around Tennessee Way may recognise one of those stickers. I can't get it. I can't get it. I'm trying to get the sticker off, and it's like I'm just kind of doing it from the wrong angle. You can't actually see what I'm doing. Go on, Craftsman. There we go. I can't cover up Big Jet TV. I like the fact the NASA sticker has become naturally weathered and beaten by just being on the back of my uh, iPad. I will, I will put him over Goblin Gaming, my sticker, and 901 uh, Live Life Local Collierville Radio Channel, I think that is. Go Dragons. 
I think I should put the craftsman here. And now, whenever I look at the back of my iPad, I have the craftsman there to remind me always to keep on steady crafting. All right. There we go. So craftsman is in place. Pride of place. There we go. Awesome. Let's get the chat back. Because I'm lonely without the chat now. Where's the chat gone? There we go. Um, there we go. <sighs> right, what did I miss in the chat? Everything. Wow, Tony Kachiri seasoning is awesome. Sprinkle it on chicken before it's baking and you'll be glad you did, says Candy Grab. I will find this out. Uh, as far as I know, it, it, he sends it out in everything because he used to sell stuff directly. That, you know, he used to sell things he made and he used to sell them and he put things in them. Uh, and sometimes he put other bits and bobs in there. But this is just from his Etsy store. So it's probably just like, you know, he doesn't go to all that extra trouble. But yeah, he, one, in one of his videos, he's got a big box of this stuff and said, look, I've got some more. <laughs> uh, Phil Lewis is in. How is everyone today? Hi, Phil. Hey, buddy. E e Eon's car is in as well. E welcome, Eon's car. Uh, you've encroached on the big jet sticker. And now a little bit, but only a little tiny bit. But if I'm going to encroach on Big Jet TV, I've even covered up, you know, I mean, even Giant Bomb got covered. You can just barely see Giant Bomb under there. Uh, gross Models has disappeared a bit. Making Models, Carl, got Team Inept, Totally Scale Models. Uh, there's an ammo sticker under there somewhere. Uh, we've got Dad's Mephist and Red sticker. My sticker, obviously. There's a big Giant E Models one. That's from uh, my very good friend Kenneth in Australia when he sent me the uh, spider box. And there's a 901 Live Life Local and then Big Jet TV. But yeah, it only barely covers it. But if I was going to cover Big Jet TV with anything, it would be Craftsman would be worth it because he's worth it. Anyway, let's crack on. Enough nonsense. So, uh, Jamie Bones in. Hey, Jamie, not seen you for a while. Hey, buddy, hope you're okay. Hope you're good. Let's do some damn work, shall we? So... Yes, I've jumped out a couple of issues because uh, there's a few sprues. I've got to try and find them and they're in a box and I've got to have to dig them out from somewhere. So you will have a Junkworks sticker soon, Fox. Cool. Thank you very much, Scott. I will add that to the collection. I do have other places that I put stick. Oh, actually. Mm, I'll sort that later. I'll sort that later. Uh, I do have other places that I put stickers, but I always put at least one of each sticker on the back of my iPad. Uh, okay, Plague Marine Champion. So yeah, we've jumped ahead. There's, I've got a couple of sprues that they're in a box, but the box, because I, I couldn't get everything in one box, so the other box is kind of under three other boxes, and I didn't want to have to take the front front room apart to try and find it, because it's been there for months. So I've jumped ahead to issue... <laughs> Behave. That's Dave's influence, that. So we're going to make a Plague Marine Champion, which is just this one single sprue. Scaly Model says, what? How very dare you? Yes. No, if I was, if I, I didn't even, I didn't even cover up Big Jet TV with NASA, and NASA's cool as. But if there was, if there's any sticker that would be validly replay, could validly go over <clears throat> Big Jet TV, it would be the Craftsman, but only the Craftsman. And like I say, if you don't know what the Craftsman is, then when you finish watching here, please do go and do a Google search for Craftsman. Is Craftsman a steady crafting? C R A F S M A N. You just, just trust me. Watch all his videos. You will fall in love, and you will, you'll love it. It's just, it's just the best YouTube channel in the world. And I hope one day, like I say, he, he, some of the stuff he makes, uh, he does sell on his Etsy store or elsewhere. And <clears throat> he also offers like downloadable three D S T L files of them as well. But, um. At the moment, it's all STL files, which is no use to me. But one day, I hope to actually buy one of his creations. One day. Like an, an Agraman or something. Or oh, there is actually a little... Oh, wasn't good. There is actually a little Craftsman figure that he had sort of made for him. I'd also like to pick that up one day, if that's ever gets made. <laughs> but when he sells like his things that he's actually handmade and you buy one he includes like lots of little action figures and just little bits and bobs he's got lying around in his workshop 
just random things, <laughs> little bits of stuff. Steve would love it, like little widgets and things he's got lying around. He just puts them in as a way of saying thank you. And I love that. Right, we actually get with this, I didn't realise we get two little, hello, two little tiny nurglings for this. Or at least one little tiny nurgling and one trying to look badass in a helmet, which is hilarious. And I know you guys can't see it very well, so I'll see if I can zoom in for that. Now, of course, we've come to the end of the uh, 40 minutes in and Fox finally does some work. Yeah, but I did unboxing and unboxing is a good excuse for not doing work. I was doing my mystery package, wasn't I? Oh, got a piece on there, hang on. Don't throw that away, Fox, and you spoon. Yeah, I'm allowed, I'm, I'm allowed to delay when I'm doing unboxings. Ping. Yes, the satisfaction of destroying the sprue ready for binning. Or recycling if you want to make sprue goo. Or if you have your own injection moulding machine, which is a thing you can actually buy. You could, I just burped then, I do apologise. You could keep all your old bits of sprue and melt them down and make your own plastic models. You can actually buy uh, injection moulding. They're not cheap. The little domestic ones, like a thing you go and yeah, you can buy them. Do, 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 do. Or you could just melt the plastic and make whatever you want. You could just have a big pile of plastic sprue. You could do whatever you want. Right, so it's the usual routine. We're going to clean this up and then get him combobulated. I'll see if I can zoom in on the little nurgling though to show you. Uh, I will get a bit of blue tax. I can stick him on the base and then I've got a chance of showing. Got one little nurgling. He's just carrying something. I don't know what. One of them is he's looking very he's looking very sassy with it with the helmet on. Let me just I've never actually painted a nurgling, but from what I've seen of nurgling so far, I think they're just the best thing. They're like little tiny demons, but they're a bit they're a bit I suppose they're like the Warhammer version of minions, I suppose in a way. That's kind of what they remind me of. And they always have such I can't get that to stay on. They always seem to have a real great sense of humour. It's got a little bit of a nub in the middle there, which is really unfortunately placed, but we'll just get that off. I've just snipped his nub off. That doesn't sound very friendly at all. Can I actually get this on there so you can see so you can see him? See if I can zoom in or at least focus in. Hang on. Attempt nonsense. Which? Nope, I'll have to hold him up. This will probably go terribly. He's looking all sassy with his hands on his hips and he's got a, a Plague Marine helmet on. <laughs> he is adorable. And I do like nurglings. Now I've got to sort my focus out again because it all went wrong. Ugh. Hang on, let me get a focus tool. Uh, that'll do. One second, folks. Focusing, focusing. Oh, oh, yes, there we go, that'll do. Now, I could move the camera back closer up again because we're not doing the big boxes now, but I'm going to leave it where it is because it's a lot of faff. Uh, you don't really watch what I'm doing here anyway. You really just listen to me. Okay, so that's them on there. Let's get everything cleaned up and we'll get everything glued on the stand. That's the campless nurgling ever, says B3. Yeah, it's very sassy, isn't it? It's like, hands on hips. You have a choice of heads for this model. Each has a different nurgling to go with them. Have a look and see. Uh, each component is another... Uh, uh, okay, it actually shows using both nurglings, regardless. Uh, Think. Feed the big one to me, brothers. I'll crush his bones to mulch and feed his rotting flesh to the maggots. Your looks shank plague marine champion, which is what we're building. Uh, yeah, I think you can do both of them, actually. I think they have both of the nurglings. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you're getting both the nurglings anyway, because they're too adorable. But you do get a choice of heads, you are correct. Uh, that's the cat. Oh, we've done that one. Right, so let's get the dude built first. A diddly bomb, a diddly bomb, a diddly bomb. 
So anyway, how is everyone? I hope you're all well. I need to get myself in a decent position where I can see what I'm doing, but I'm not knocking the camera every two and a half seconds. So I need to move that to one second. Wobbly camera while I'm doing stuff on the desk. Yes, I hope you're all well and dandy. I hope all the audio and video is okay, by the way. I hope you're all hearing and seeing me okay. I hope everybody is well. Uh, I myself am fine and indeed dandy. I, uh, it's my weekend, so I've been having a little bit of Xbox time when I've not been filming. Well, I did uh, lots of voiceover work yesterday for the latest Vulcan episode. Uh, not yesterday, on Friday. The latest uh, Vulcan episode. I've got a little bit of voiceover left to do on it, and then I've got to render the video out. And I'll be doing that on Monday, because weekend's my week, you know, Saturday, Sunday's my weekend off, as it were. Although I do, I will be, of course, I do my streams on a Saturday and Sunday, but that's playing video games and doing Warhammer, so it's not really, not really work, is it? Uh, so, yeah, I tend to play some video games at the weekend, but I was, um, I was playing last night, I watched, uh, I finished my stream yesterday playing some Skyrim, had my dinner, I was like, what, what do I want to play? I could play some more of the Dragon Age Inquisition, but I wasn't really in the mood for that. I just wanted to chill out, so I thought, you know, I've not played in a while, I'll play some Destiny, I've not played Destiny for ages. And sometimes you just want to sort of, you know, mong out and just find your file, which, oh, there it is. You just want to mong out and not think and just, and just, oh, I'm not using my mat, am I? What are you doing? God, Fox, pay attention. <sighs> all okay with a nice view of the sharp mouth device, oh, you see my head all the time. Oh yeah, I don't want that. Uh, let me let me make an adjustment. Where's the middle? Where's the middle? There's the middle. Right. Now, hopefully, when I'm working, you won't see me, but you'll need some focus. Let me focus the issue for you. In the, oh, it's perfectly in focus. Ah, oh, fantastic. I like it when a plan comes together. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I started playing some Destiny, and uh, because it's one of those games that. Uh, whatever you may think of it, you can't deny that the the physical gameplay me mechanics, uh, the movement, the gunplay, is nigh on perfection. Nobody does like first person shooter gunplay like Bungie. Nobody comes even close. They just are masters of it. They're, mas they're not masters of everything, but the one thing they are masters of is first person gunplay. And I thought, I'll play some of that, there you go. That'll keep me chilled for a little while, just give me a bit of brainless fun. Uh, and then the first, as I turned the Xbox on, I thought, oh wait, hang on, it's been a while since I played it. I'm going to have like three hours of updates to download. But amazing, there's only like, uh, I think nine, 90 meg of uploads, downloads, updates and stuff. I'm like, okay, that's not so bad. So I installed them, I was in there quite quickly, because it normally takes ages to get into the game, it's ridiculous. Started the game, and bang. I was like, whoa, hang on a minute. There's like 32 different in-game, there's like 40 different in-game currencies, none of which I remember what the hell they are. I'd forgotten, basically. It's a nightmare. With like a billion different in-game currencies that you need for this upgrade or that upgrade or this different in-game currency for this particular quest. And ah, oh. I'm like, what? I was totally at sea. I'm like, I don't... Champion of the with the with the what now and the uh... so in the end I just thought you know what I'll just I'll I'll just go and shoot dudes on the moon. <laughs> I was completely lost. It's so convoluted and over the top now because the problem they've always had is that they they like they, in, they invent like three or four different kind of currencies and upgrade paths for your weapons, and then they do a new season where they bring in some new comp some new like upgrade path with new currencies, but they keep the old ones for those that haven't got and it's like. They've ended up adding so many different, you know, like legendary shards and silver dust and bright engrams and pencil filaments and space anomaly verticalizers. And I'm like, I don't know what 90% of these things are. And I've so look, lost track of, you know, all the different DLC. I've got all the DLCs because I have the season pass, but I'm like, I'm just, I've, I'll just shoot some dudes on the moon now. I've given up trying to even 
I'd forgotten that I'd given up trying to even keep up with the seasonal stuff because I play it so infrequently that by the time I go in and play it, there's like a week left of the season stuff and I get maybe 10 or 20 levels up in the season leveling and then it's, it stops and I'm like, oh, I just, oh, okay. And I never bother doing any of the season specific quests because they all involve you in multiplayer or gambit or raids and I'm like, well, I don't do any of those. So I can't complete the quest to get this weapon, so I'll just go and shoot some dudes on the moon. So I had a very pleasant evening shooting dudes on the moon. It was quite good fun. I picked up a couple of, like, just while you're on the moon type quests. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, and it was just good mindless fun. So if you kind of... I reminded myself that if I just forget about the, the fear of missing out crap that you get with the season structure... Uh, and all this, you know, do this quest and that quest to get this. I, I don't care. I've got two weapons that I've had since I was like level three. And I like those weapons and they're the only weapons I want. I don't want to change them ever. I like season one weapon or season two, maybe. Uh, one is um, one is the. Uh, <clears throat> what's it called? One is uh, the Tone Patrol Scout Rifle which has the Firefly mod, so every time I get a critical headshot, the person explodes, which is great, because he then damages the people around him. And that's from Season 1, and it's just kinetic. And I've got uh, a and other generic um, auto rifle that doesn't really have any special perks, but I've, ma I've masterworked... This is back in the days of Masterworks. I've masterworked them back up, up to the full maximum now. And you know what? I like them so much, I don't want to get rid of my Tone Patrol. I love that rifle. So... I've ignored all the new weapons that have come out in all the DLCs and all that kind of stuff. I just want my Tone Patrol and my Auto Rifle. Uh, but because I have an exotic rocket launcher, I use the Twin, twin Tails uh, rocket launcher, I can't then use any exotic slot 1 or 2 weapons. So I'm like, okay, so because I've got, I've got a couple of uh, real early Destiny 2 uh auto rifles and stuff that I'd love to use but you can't have more than one exotic which I hate so I've got a load of exotic weapons that I could use but I couldn't use either because I've got either the twin tails rocket launcher or the um, the Thunderlord machine gun which is the one that puts all the lightning and thunder down does a little extra damage I like doing that on crowds but because they're exotic I can't use them any other so there you go uh, that's better, but I've never noticed the hairs in the palms of your hand before. I don't have hairs on the palms of my hand. I'm not an onanist. No such things. Honestly, hairs on the palms of my hand. Oops, sorry, Guthorn. I spawned him over. Uh, but, uh, all okay with a nice video. We've done that one. Wouldn't it be a fox film without his brain going all wobbly? It, no, it wouldn't. I always thought Harry Palms is a sign of lycanthropy. He's a weir fox. I'm a, I'm a fox wolf. Well, actually, literally, I'm a fox wolf because of my name. <laughs> fox wolf. It's a great name, unless you get stopped by the police or you need to call the police and actually be treated seriously. It, it gets interesting sometimes. Uh, it's definitely the first sign of madness. The second sign is looking for them. Let's see if he looks. No, he looked for them. There we go. I fell for that dinner like a spoon. I should just learn to ignore everything Dave ever says, really. Right, let's get the scrapey tool. How are we doing? Yeah, looking good. We're looking a bit dark here, a bit light. Do I need to up the brightness a little bit, perhaps? Let's have a look. Exposure a little bit. Okay. That might be better for you. If I bring anything excessively white, though, it may explode. So remind me. At least you can see things now. Uh, one moment, two. So anyways, I hope you're all well. I hope you're having a jolly good time and staying safe. Oops. Itchy nose. Uh, what's been going on here? So I was recording some voiceover on Friday. Been doing my streams yesterday and today. A little bit of video gaming to relax after those. Because speaking non-stop for three hours is it's kind of hard on the voice. They just want to chill out afterwards. So on Monday, tomorrow, I've got to do some more voice, last bits of voiceover work for the next Falcon episode. And then get that uploaded into early accessings. Uh, now I can see little bits of, there's little tiny bits of seam. I don't like using my knife to get rid of seam lines, but 
mold lines. But sometimes you have to. Hi all, are we keeping well and safe? I was like, hi all, oh, oh yeah. Hi, it says stupid. Hey, stuff. Hang on. Water. Stupid says, hi all, are we keeping well and safe? Hi, stupid. I hope everybody is well and safe. Everything's on fire at the minute. But you know what? Most people are, are getting getting through it admirably. They're awesome times to those who are. And if you're not having a good time of it, well, that's what that's why I do all these live streams with chat. You know, I can't fix people's problems, but at least I can give them somewhere to hang out where they can have a chat and a natter and get their mind taken off it. It's kind of why I like doing live streams so much because it's a good way for me to give people a channel to get their mind off things now uh, this week i don't know exactly what times yet uh, and i may end up clashing with some other people's streams but they'll all be restricted affairs anyway but uh, this week is decal time for the millennium falcon because of course i've finished all the exterior hull now for the falcon i've got all the base colors down and it's kind of it's kind of one color so there's not a lot to do so uh, the next step of course is decals uh, and as you know there are a batrillion decals on the millennium falcon so i'm going to be doing some live streams this week hopefully assuming everything goes to plan hopefully and my plan on what my plan is is to do uh is that nub oh. i thought i'd snapped a bit off but it's just a nub my plan is to do uh, a stream for the e-models channel which is the live stream do some decals and then i plan on doing a stream for my patreon supporters so it'll be patreon supporters only that can watch it and join in the live chat and then a third stream for my youtube channel members just so they can have a little sort of bit of a reward for being a supporter and maybe i don't know maybe a stream for everybody else i don't know yet I mean, that's four streams that's a lot of that's a lot of talking nonsense for three or four hours so we'll see but initially it's going to be at least we've got there we go uh, he's got um i'm mixing up three different conversations at once here initially it will be uh e-models then patrons and then one for channel members just as a way of saying thank you, it's nice to sometimes give back stuff to the people that, you know, give me their hard-earned money. So uh, I don't often get a chance to do that. So sometime this week, I'd say I, I probably will end up, just because of the nature of how many people stream and stuff during the week, I probably will end up clashing with somebody. Um, so if you are a YouTuber and you have a stream and I do a stream at the same time, please don't be offended or upset. I'll literally get like a handful of viewers both of them i'll get literally like you know a small number of people i'm not going to get like 50 or 60 people watching um other than maybe my patrons because i've got you know quite a few number of patrons but they tend not to be very populous when i do like exclusive live streams which is fine i don't mind so yeah don't be offended if i do one at the same time or one of yours because you're not gonna you're not gonna lose as many viewers let's be honest uh, don't forget, folks, likes if you stick a thumb up. Yes. Oh, I like it if they stick, thicker, stick a thumb up for me. Yes. Yes, do stick a like on the video. Give me a thumb up. Quite nice if you do that. And don't forget to like and subscribe. So, yeah, please, if you're a YouTube streamer, uh, if you're a YouTube and you've got a streamer like on a Tuesday night or a Wednesday night or something, please don't be offended if I do one at the same time. It's not going to impact you very much. Don't worry about it. But I am limited at what times I can do stuff. You know, if I want to do one for my patrons, they're all over the world and I can't just do it during the day on a on a weekday because, you know, everybody in the UK is at work. So I'm like, I've got to take account of when I can try and get as many people able to watch live. It's usually, so it's going to be an evening kind of thing, probably. I don't know when yet. Okay, Lurkers, which country are you from, says Mordraker. There you go, that'll get the Lurkers out. If you are watching this, uh, and you can see the chat do join in the live chat you, you don't have to you absolutely don't have to i know a few of you out there that just like to watch and don't like to do chat but you do not have to but you're more than welcome to if you want to 
but yeah if you're if you're watching and you're not normally a chatter just come in and say where you're from i'm obviously in uh the northwest of england i'm in up cheshire way where i am we don't need to know your, your full address and postcode and stuff <laughs> just say where you're from you know what town or part of the world we don't need your credit card number or anything like that obviously uh speaker eight is in hello all i hope everyone is well today welcome spid uh, candy graham says hi to spid nim says usa usa nim is our token american dice dragon There's somebody outside, right? It's been doing it all morning. There's somebody outside doing some kind of DIY, which is the state of affairs around here at the moment. But it sounds like they're sort of hammering something or, you know, like maybe chopping at a tree with an axe. But what makes it really weird and annoying is if you know, if you hear someone like chopping wood with an axe, you hear chunk, chunk, chunk as they as they chop the wood, they're like, ah, bang, 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 bang. But what I'm actually hearing all this morning is bang. And then like 30 seconds and then bang and i'm like either you're the worst hammerer or axer in the world or there's something weird going on i don't know what's going on but it's, it's frustrating me because it's annoying not because it's loud and noisy just because i don't understand why it's what's causing it to be the way it is uh Ian's car i'm from bristol england i'm doing well good show where about Ian? i'm from speedwell says scaly models You're not from Bristol, Dad. You were made in Liverpool. You're Scouser. Are they? As far as I'm concerned. You are our token Scouser in the in the boom hut. That's the way it is like, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like, I'd be changing that now, no. It is a shame you don't actually have a, a Liverpool accent. I know you're not actually a Scouser, by the way. This is just a joke for those that obviously think I've lost my senses. But, uh, yeah. Dad's a token Scouser. Uh, B3 says, I'm from Wales, but I exist in a state of apathy in England. You could make that sentence shorter and you could replace, I exist in a state of apathy in England with, I live in England. It's the same thing, less words. If you exist in a state of apathy, then that means you're basically English by birth because you've adapted to our ways. <laughs> yeah, apathy is our national pastime. <laughs> apathy, guilt and <laughs> dejection. It is the British way. Uh, David Butch, that model is in Portsmouth, England. Right, my barber. Well, you know that's not Portsmouth, but this is as good as you get. Portsmouth is like pirates, and pirates talk like this. Arr, arr, Tony. Look at the layers, Tony. Look at the layers. Look at the stratification on that, Tony. That's ancient Roman, that is. Late Roman, early, dark ages, middle ages, medium ages, whatever came after. I don't know. Bronze Age, after Iron Age, and before the Romans. Yeah. Always time for a Phil Harding impression. It's not a very good Phil Harding impression. If you don't live in the UK, if you don't know what Time Team is, you need to go and find Time Team in your area and watch it. If you're in the US, Time Team, you can watch every single episode on, on Amazon Prime. And probably in other countries as well. You can't in the UK because we have to watch it on Channel 4's built-in app, which has adverts, which is garbage. Are people from Ghoul called Ghoulies, says Scale Models? I mean, asks Scaly Models. I don't know, actually. I don't know what they'd call them. Ghoulians sounds really stupid, whereas Ghoulies doesn't sound much better, but... There he goes. Time teaming, says Nim. Absolutely. If you watch Time Team, you'd understand why I like Time Team so much. We've got a barrel to drill there. I'm from York, really, so I'm a Yorkie, says so Stu Pop. Mm, yeah, but are you a fruit and nut? Because <laughs> that's the Yorkie fruit. Mm. Shut up, Fox. Right, so that's that kind of cleaned up. I'm kind of grumpy at the minute because I realised a few weeks ago 
that there is a perfect tool for cleaning out any nubs that sit in the middle of these um, Death Guard backpacks with the you know the sort of the, the ridge bits in the middle, and that's a tiny little square chisel. Uh, and so I ordered one. I'm still waiting for on, on it for from e-models because they were out of stock when I ordered it. I need to drop an email to remind them actually. Uh, but I'm gutted now because this is probably one of the last Death Guard figures I have to make. So I wish I'd I wish I'd thought about I knew about this little chisel <laughs> before I'd before I'd built all these hundreds of Death Guard Plague Marines that need it on the backpacks. I'm like, oh now oh. I think I realised like the next day I'm like, hang on a minute, I've only got like one or two dudes left to make. God damn it! And then it was out of stock anyway. So, because <sighs> I watched uh, I watched one of Leaky Cheese's video where he's working on a a forge world tank and he's using a little tiny square chisel to take out the crap between the tank tracks from the uh, from the moulding. And I'm like, oh, that would work brilliantly on Death Guard backpacks. And then I haven't got any left to do. God damn it! Backpack complete. Do 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 do, it's belly time, belly. Get in my belly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, nubulations. It's all in the stratigraphy, says David Butch, that model. That's right, Tony, it's in the layers. Layers it is. Off it. <laughs> now, I'm not too fussed about cleaning up nub marks on these Plague Marines and Death Guard. I, I mean, I do want to clear the nubs off. Obviously, what I mean is, I'm not worried if I don't get a perfectly smooth surface. If, for example, in trimming a nub, you'll see me when I'm doing these Plague Marines. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just whizzing through with the knife and getting rid of a lot of the nub areas. And it's purely because um, their armor is battered and chipped and broken anyway. So if I'm like cleaning off a nub and I accidentally gouge the plastic, that's fine. It's just another ding in the armor. There's little sort of bullet marks and dings and holes. It's just another ding in the armor that I can paint like a rust spot later on. So I do really like the the potential with these Death Guard to just, you know, get kind of casual with it and not worry too much about making it nice and pristine. Uh, and I'll be honest, when I do eventually get round to playing the game, like I said before, if you remember, I'm doing this. This is a, a sort of partnership with me and George, this whole project. So he'll get to keep all the space means and I'll get to keep the Death Guard. And I, wasn't, I hadn't been planning on having a Death Guard army till that point. I probably will end up getting more Death Guard, though, because I'll have an army's worth of dudes, a small force of dudes. I'll probably want to, you know, build that up and play more on it. Depending on how it goes painting them, I think I'm going to enjoy painting these guys. Because they are just filth and detritus and rot and decay incarnate. That's what they are. So whereas I might spend, you know, a good couple of hours or more carefully painting a space wolf. You know, a space wolf, space marine. You get all the nice colours. One of these guys, you could paint him in half an hour. I mean, you could theoretically paint him with just glazes and contrast paints and stuff but i won't i won't be that cheap on it but you could paint these guys really really quickly because it's mostly going to be filth and decay and you can just make them look even more decayed and rotten than they are and i like that that appeals to me massively it's a shame that bell's not actually drilled out but i've not got the skills to drill out that bell i don't think Fox, if you do get around to playing 40k, which edition will you play, 8th or 9th? Well, I would have said originally I will play 8th, but then I got into... I I started doing Warhammer around about the time the 8th edition launched, and I still haven't played a game yet, and now it's 9th edition, so it'll be 9th edition. I mean, I went ahead and bought the Astra Militarum Codex, and I also got the Forge World Codex for Death Core, because I got uh, Death Core vehicles. And then I tried building some Deathcore and it went wrong, but we won't talk about that. Uh, but by the time I eventually get around to playing it, it'll probably be 9th edition. I guess I'll have to buy more codices. I guess. I don't know. I like, literally have not played. I've played one single game and that wasn't even normal. It was a Daka Daka rally at an open day. It was really nothing to do with anything, really. 
and that was thoroughly enjoyable so i really want to play a game but it'll be when i've got a, when i've got enough of a force assembled and painted up to play which will be never i've got like 40 tempestus i've got like, i think about 40 tempestus scions and i've got about 50 or 60 imperial guard none of which are painted up and i've got no no decent vehicles painted up that i would play i've got a couple of vehicles painted up but they're not anything i'd want to take to a place and play them like my uh, space wolves uh, storm wolf is you know aside from the fact it was bought by someone i still have access to it um it's worth far too much to be manhandled on a for a game uh, i got my chimera that uh, dad and the guys very kindly bought me it was painted up i've not finished painting the figure for that yet uh, i've got that but i wouldn't want i don't think i want to play that in game because it had lots of powders and things on it and it's a bit it's a bit finicky to play that game. Also, it was a gift, and I don't know if I want to play a gift. I don't want to get it broken. If it was a gift for me, I'd rather just have it nicely painted and on display rather than played on it. I think. Uh, Paul. Di Tommaso is in. Hi, Paul. Hey, Paul, mate. I hope you're okay. I hope you're feeling a little bit better today. Maybe. Welcome, welcome, and thank you for coming along. We're just excavating what appears to be a cesspit, Tony, and because we found this between Bronze Age and Roman pottery, we can say this piece of petrified poo is from around 14 BC. Yeah. Yep. It says B3. You clearly know your history because the Romans came in around about 50 BC. Uh, 50... Oh, I got it wrong, yeah. 50 BC. So yeah, 50 BC, I think. So that would be, yeah. Petrified poo. I think that's what you like to call a coprolite. Wait, hang on. Coprolite's a... Uh, uh, um... Okay, coprolite is what you call it if you're a paleontologist and you've got dinosaur poop and it's fossilised. What I don't know if that word also applies to just non-fossilised human waste that archaeologists would be dealing with. I don't know if that counts. I don't know what the archaeological name for ancient poop would actually be. There's that Bobbins Rhino I gave you. You could use it if you did a trauma center job on it, Fox. Uh, you mean, uh, where is it? Uh, uh, this one. Oh, it's here. Don't you worry. You've even got your name on a bit of, on a bit of paper. Now, I've got that, which is a real old school Rhino. This is like proper 1990s um, 40K kit here. That Steve, obviously, uh, B3 being Steve Monday, who likes to kit bash things. Um, has all kinds of different things to call it. There's there's ladders. There's uh, this is a missile. This was something from an action force or GI Joe or something, wasn't it? Something like that. Uh, you've got a stretcher from a Tamiya kit. That could be the Land Rover ambulance kit, I think. And some really small bolters. They are really small bolters. That's weird. Uh, and all kinds of bits and bobs to come. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't do a. a um, tabletop trauma on that because it's not got a really terrible paint job it's just painted green so there's not a lot to sort of fix on that that's just more of a fun paint job i think on that i'll strip it down but thank you for that steve yes uh but tabletop trauma center, tabletop trauma center will really be things like a really really badly painted model that i have to strip down and kind of rescue and make it good and stop it being sad and unhappy because a model is never happy when it's badly painted. Um, that's the plan anyway. And I'm, I'm not sure yet if what I'll do is for some of the things, what I might do is, like the first one, I'm, I'm not I'm not revealed to the public yet what it is, although patrons and channel members know what it is. The first one I will be stripping down and repainting in the colour scheme of the original paint job, but just better. <laughs> it's got a terrible paint job on it. And the idea is basically that if you don't know what it is, uh, I will I will occasionally get a model from eBay or somewhere that's been just painted by somebody's basically got half a potato and painted it and made a complete hash of it. And the the thing is not to really not to take the mickey out of people, not to not to ridicule the paint job. Not at least if I do, it'll be gentle. It's I don't I don't do you know mocking people's lack of skill. What I'd rather do is gently rib them for their lack of skill, but then say you know what. This was terrible, but let me show you how you could have done it. And the, I think the idea will be that I'll mostly 
try and reproduce their paint scheme, but properly. Because I, I, I like, I like to, I'm an educator, not like a, not a critic. I like to educate somebody in how they can improve. Well, probably for, for the first one at least, I'm going to reproduce the paint, the colour scheme and paint job it's got, but properly, obviously. Because I don't know if the person that painted it, it could be that, you know, I buy some crappy old painted Warhammer kit off eBay. It could be that the person has no skill or talent whatsoever and painted it terribly. Uh, and then that's <clears throat> that's it. They just, they just painted it badly and they've got no skills. Or it could be that that person painted it, you know, 15 years ago when they were 12. And, and nowadays they could be a really good painter. And it's just they never got around to repainting it. They might as well flog it. Get 20 quid for it. There you go. Or it might be that that person has perhaps, for example... It's not impossible thing. That person may have reasons why the paint job is terrible. It may be they have particular, you know, maybe uh, coordination difficulties or a disability or they can have learning difficulties or it could be a kid, just a kid, like a seven-year-old kid who thinks he's done a brilliant paint job. And I'm not going to sit there and, and tell them that they suck. Uh, but what I'm going to do is say, I could, here, here's where you went wrong. Here's where you can make it better. I might take the take the Mickey a little bit, just very gently. I mean, if if it's a terrible paint job, I'm going to sit there and say this is a terrible paint job. This is what is this? I'm not going to I'm not going to mock mercilessly. I know Paul uh, from Team Inept would love it if I just mock them ridiculously, but no. Uh, uh, well, that's very kind of you, Raging Modeler. Hey, you filthy animals! Any celebrity yet? No, but I. Uh, you missed my unboxing. <laughs> I thought you were sending me a model of a of a of a pot noodle type thing. <laughs> that was a surprise. Thank you very much for that. For some reason, I expected it to be a plastic model kit of like a ramen pot. I don't know why. I don't know why. It might be something you said. I don't know. I do get a few finished models off eBay, but not sure what if I what I do to them counts as rescue. Says B3. No. I think what you do to them counts as I don't know. Probably a war crime. So yeah, it'll always be done as a case of there'll be a little bit of dear God in heaven, what is this? But then there'll be a lot of let's see where it's gone wrong and let's see why it's gone wrong. And let's see if we can show whoever in the off chance the person that painted it actually ever watches it. I can see what you're going for. Let's show you how to do that. Because I for all I know. I think for most of them, it's just somebody with no skills and talents who's never who never figured out how to do it, uh, and that's what they've done. I like this one. I like this head with the eye in the middle of the helmet. I think we'll do that one. Uh, I just googled it. Lord help me if someone looks at my history. Paleo feces are human poo dug up on an archaeological dig, as there has not been enough time to fossilization to occur. Yes, I don't ever want to use your computer at your house. And not even just that reason. That's one of many reasons I would want to use your computer at your house. Uh, no stability there, Rod, uh, Raging. If I send you something, then I give you free reign to take the Wii. If that's something you want, I can sort that out. I don't know. I think we had that conversation, didn't we? I think it's, it's more... F I don't know. I don't, know if, I don't know if I think it's more it's more interesting or not interesting but it's, part of me feels like it's more fun if I have no connection at all to the original builder because then it, it is completely it's hard to explain into words explain into words it's hard to even make a sentence Jesus Christ what what are you on it's hard to put into words but it's it I don't know it's it works better in my head if it's just completely... I have no idea who the builder is. Yep. I never like these seam lines around the sort of ear pieces because they, they never look nice and clean when you try and scrape the seam line, the mould line. I really must stop calling mould lines seam lines and seam lines mould lines. It never looks nice and clean when you're finished. Always looks a bit scruffy. I mean, this is Death Guard. It doesn't really matter. 
Uh, I can live with war crimes as B3. Yeah, pretty much. Or maybe you're just refreshing them. But there is something to be said, though. I mean, there is something to be said for uh, you know, eBay rescues. Uh, if if you want to, you know, get into Warhammer, but for example, now that you know they're not cheap. It's not cheap to get these kits, and uh, you know it, it can be expensive. But there is something to be said for going on eBay, looking for a, a, a model. Could be any model of Warhammer, but especially Warhammer. Looking for a model that somebody's built and painted with half a potato and their elbow and maybe a dead cat. Because it's like they'll sell it for like a fiver, a tenner, something like that. And I know Dad, Scaly Models, he bought himself one of those little flying space marine things that looked like absolute bobbins. It looked like it'd been painted with a dead cat and, you know, somebody just put paint on their elbow and gone like that. And the paint was like that thick. You could see it was like they painted with Artex or something. I think it was Dad. And he stripped it down and repainted it and it looked great. And it cost him more like 3p or something. So there's always there's always bargains to be had. It's like I've said before, when I do when I eventually get around to doing my death guard, unless I actually buy the kits and send them to someone to get them built, because I refuse to not death guard, uh, death core. Unless I get them from Forge World and send them to someone, what I'll probably do is just save myself the stress and the hassle, because I hate building those figures. And just buy some some pre-made deathcore off eBay because people make them. You'll find there's loads of like, and not just deathcore, but there's loads of like things where they built. They've got a squad of dudes. They've they've built them and I and maybe just prime them, and that's it. And then they flog them for like ten, fifteen quid. Sometimes they flog it for the same cost as the actual kit, which is you know, I suppose fair enough. But sometimes you sell it for less. But it's not about money. It's just about. I'm a lazy modeler and I hate building those those figures and I want to end I, I'm not a builder I'm a painter so for me it'll be somebody else will somebody else will build my death core minute my figures I'll paint them right that's him done this is bonds so I'll get these little nurglings cleaned up as well uh, in fact no what I'll do I meant if you want a pot noodle that could probably be arranged, there has got to be a kid of it somewhere. Oh, I see what you mean. No, for some reason I thought... For some reason I thought you dropped a hint that it was a model of a pot noodle. Not a pot noodle, but like, you know, a proper Samyong, like, ramen pot. And part of my brain, for some reason that's what I thought you said at some point. It was a model of a, a ramen dish or bowl. And part of my brain clearly thought, yeah, that sounds like the kind of thing Bandai would do. They'd make a model of a bowl of ramen or... A, a ramen pot or something. I don't know why. Maybe it's just something you said and I completely misunderstood it or misinterpreted it. Most likely. That's a nice surprise then to get the RX-78-2 in there. So thank you very much for that. It's very nice of you. We'll go into my little collection of SD kits that I need to get around to doing at some point. I was saying before how I've got like a small selection of SD and BB Senshi kits that... I'm an idiot because I've got I'm I'm struggling to find space to put boxes of kits and that's why I, I say to people now don't send me new kits if you can avoid it. That's only a little box, so it's not so bad. Uh, but if I had half a brain in my head, I'd just go ahead go ahead and build all the SD and BB Century kits, just because I can take them apart and paint them later. But it takes up a lot less space than boxes. We don't need those stinking boxes, senor. Bandai's released a model kit of a cup and noodle. Yeah, but that's probably yeah, that sounds about right. I don't know why I thought that's what you were sending me. You must have said something, and I thought perhaps oh, he's told me what it is now. So I think it was. I think you were wanting. I think at one point you were, you were wanting to tell me what it was, and I was like, no, don't tell me because I want the surprise. And then you said something I can't remember. And for some reason, I thought it was a model of a ramen pot. You know, with the little flowery shaped things and all the bits and bobs. I don't know why. Oh, do, 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 do. Yeah, so anyway, so yeah, there is there is something to be said for, you know, picking up some terribly painted models on eBay and just using them as, as practice models. I mean, I would say, you know, if you... I wouldn't say build up an entire army that way because that's kind of a bit out of order. Because then you, 
you're not really paying games rip drop anything and if everybody did that games workshop would have got a business you wouldn't have any warhammer to pay but it might be occasionally you know if you just want one of something and you're struggling to you can't afford it or something like that or you just, you just want a test pig or just something fun there are bargains to be had but the trick of course is that you have to be careful what you get like you, you would never buy a pre-built and uh aircraft kit for example because how are you going to paint in the cockpit if they pre-assembled it you can't do things like that but if it's like you know say an orc vehicle or something it's something you have to look at them and think can i paint that or is it going to be a pain because there's bits on the inside i can't get to now it's been assembled the figures are great because you can usually get to most of it but that's what that's what um tabletop trauma center will be as soon as i finish the falcon i have decided now that as soon as the falcon is finished the next video build series will be the first inaugural episode of tabletop trauma center <laughs> and patrons and youtube channel members have had a little preview of what that will be the the, the, the job the model woohoo i'm living on a prayer says radio modeler i don't i don't get it mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's one noogling done that's the one that sits on his little shoulder noogling it was noogle <laughs> It was Noigle. Yeah, the, this little sassy one with this plague marine helmet is so cool. It's just so adorable. Of course, it might be that when I actually try and paint a Nurgle, I find it's a real pain in the ass to paint, and I hate them. A Nurgling. So it might be that. I might be like discover that I hate Nurglings. But I like the fact they've just got. I do like the sense of humour you sometimes get in Warhammer stuff. A lot of it's really boring and and stiff and stead like space marines and it, it's it's drastically stupid but it's also boring and sensible and, and not exciting so i like the fact that with you know things like the nurglings and stuff they've been able to inject a sense of humor into it oh nurgling butt yeah you know they're always like little sassy things and you get similar things with the orcs as well there's a certain sense of humor with the orcs and some of the grots and stuff where they've injected a little bit of humor and it just makes it really cool i like that uh important breaking news is the most important news of the day uh, uh from nim is that lunch has been ordered however you know the rules Nim. you can't just say that we need to know because we i know you're going to probably put a picture in the boom hut anyway but we can't see that here so we need to know inquiring minds need to know what you've ordered i'm gonna guess it's something from wendy's or arby's or something like that i can't remember what your local Filth Emporium is called. And we're all going to hate you for it because we all want it. A cheeseburger, fries and chocolate Oreo milkshake. This will be my only meal since I will probably go lay down to take a nap after the stream since I was up half the night. Oh. If you're tired, dude, you don't have to you don't have to sit and watch my nonsense. I do appreciate it. I'm really grateful for the fact you are. But you know, sleep's important. At least on our, you know, at least, at least obviously until you've had your food, then you can don't do it before then, because that wouldn't really work. Love this sassy little pose that this guy's got. It's great. If you're not, if you can't, I know you can't really see it, but go and have a look at, uh, I think if you just Google search for Plague Marine Champion, you'll probably find a, a good photograph of it. Some of the Nurglings that hang around, uh, Mortarian as well, are quite good. I actually found my Mortari in the day because I, I, I pre-assembled it and put a layer of primer on it. And dear God, then I, I got sidetracked then. And dear God, it had like an inch and a half of dust on it. It's like, oh, I need to just bleach the whole model and start again. <laughs> yeah. It, trust me, it looks... It, it is like a... It's been sat there uncovered for like, what, a year and a half? Two years? And the weird thing is... Uh, Derek Gutowski... Derek Gutowski asked me, uh, probably about two years ago now, that, oh, I can't wait for you to paint that Mortarian because I've got one and I want to know how to paint it. And I'm like, yep, I'll mention that in the stream. And I put a little note on my monitor. I've got a little sticky note on my monitor. And then I never did it. Other things got in the way. 
so I've still got a note reminding me that Derek Gutowski, I need to give him a shout out in the video. He's probably long painted it and painted an entire army since then. I feel like Phil Hardin like scraping the dirt away with his trowel when I'm doing this. Uh, always use lots. Remember to like the stream, says the Elm's car. That's all right. Well, proper people clothing. Um, Nim says five guys today. <clears throat> they are across the street and down a bit from me in the mall. I just don't feel like putting people clothes on today. Ah. Yeah. I've got to be honest. Because of lockdown, I probably wash my hair once a week now. Because there's no point. There's just no point. I don't go anywhere. I don't see anybody. And I've got, I've got like a very, very short hair, so it doesn't need to be washed every day anyway. But yeah, it's like I just, I just wash my hair once every couple of weeks. No, once a week, sorry. Basically, I wash it on a Monday before the eModels live show. I don't go anywhere. There's no point. If I need to go out, I'll just put a hat on. <laughs> so there are some advantages. Especially for lazy people like me. Right. I think he's cleaned up. No, oh no, maybe not. My stream cancelled today, folks. Uh, the ganglion is pressing a nerve and it's painful. Oh, sorry to hear that, Dad. Uh, what is a ganglion? Is it like a thing in your wrist? What is a ganglion and how do I avoid getting one? Be bold, it's even easier, says Raging Modeler. Yeah, well, I usually have a number two cut anyway. Uh, <clears throat> and the good advantage of being a bloke with a number two cut is that I don't have to worry about not being able to go to a hairdresser in the middle of a lockdown because I just get the clippers and go, zzz, 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 done. Number two cut. There you go. I've got a pair of hair, hair clippers. Just give myself a number two, beard included. When I cut my hair, I trim my beard. There you go. Done. Uh, yeah, and, uh, I hope it passes soon, Dan. I'm sorry to hear that it's uh, giving you some nonsense. What is it? Is it like a... Oh, it's a cyst on the wrist. Ooh, how do you get that? Is that all this typing you do? On these live shows? In people's chat? Ganglions are people from Ganglia, obviously. <laughs> all I can see now is the shiny metal bloke on a horse spear. <laughs> <laughs> like angry mm, never mind. moving on i can't remember the uh the anglia music there so the joke died dude my hair is down to the middle of my back and i haven't been to the salon in years i just braid it and snip off the dead split ends yep i haven't had that kind of long hair for a long i used to have hair down to my butt i used to have a massive long ponytail down to my butt uh right up until the late 90s i think that was back in my grungy biker jacket combat boots days, which I've kind of slowly re returned to now I'm getting old. Because I'm getting old, my feet can't really cope with walking long distances in sneakers anymore, in my Converse sneakers. So I got myself a pair of paratrooper boots. and oh my God, they're so comfortable. My feet are basically saying, you're getting old now. You can't be doing red Converse sneakers all the time because it's painful. Like, you know, went to last time I went to uh, Telford. Dear God, I was in agony by the end of the day. And even went to my local Warhammer store for a few hours uh, about a year ago. Just for a few hours. Uh, stood around for their open day. And my feet were in agony by the end of it. It's just, oh. Because obviously sneakers, you know, Converse sneakers, they don't give you any support. So my feet were just ganked. So, yeah. So I got myself some combat boots. And my God, they're, they're comfy. Then I thought, well, I've got combat boots now. I need to get combat pants. And I got a few pairs, but they all turned out to be kind of really r rubbish pants. They're all shiny and nonsense. So I've, they're not proper combat pants. So I've got no... I've got these shorts that I'm wearing now, which are like cargo shorts in a camouflage pant. They're quite cool. I must get more of them. But yeah, I haven't got any combat pants. Proper canvasy ones. I've got, you know, I've got a pair of uh, British Army deserty ones, but they're so bright and colourful in the oranges and browns, I, I can't wear them. But some of the ones I've got are like shiny, unrippable stuff, and they look terrible. They look like work pants rather than combat pants. 
My hair is receding. It's taking longer to wash my face every morning, says Paul KK23. Welcome, Paul. Uh, I used to have long hair too, well, about 10 years ago, but hair was thinning and now being bald is shaving my head is just great. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Oh, wife's tail is to whack it with the Bible. That's the thing on his arm. Or you just go to the doctor and they'll sort it out. Because all wives' tails, they don't work. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's that bit. Move that out of the way. Uh, don't want to get glue on that. Uh, we have Ted Backpack. Oh, I've got to drill his barrel. Ooh, uh, matron, matron. Let me drill your barrels. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. From what I've read, I just go away on their own, but when it presses on a nerve, you have to get it looked at. Yeah, you were saying your little finger is a bit numb. So is it? Is it kind of here somewhere? I'm going to guess it's on this part of your wrist here somewhere. I don't know what it, what's it look like. I've, I don't know if I've got a ganglion. I wouldn't know if I had one. I've got a little bit of a... I thought I had a little bit of a lump somewhere. I won't have one. Anyway, I've not got one. But I guess it's there somewhere on your wrist. So it's pressing on a nerve if you're putting your arm down on something. Yeah, I can imagine that's painful. I've had a few cysts. They can be very painful. Oh, that's me. Uh, when they start to drain, they smell awful. Ew. I haven't been into barber in more than a decade. I just brush it back and tie it off. I trim a bit at the temples every now and then. The hair's all falling out anyhow. Uh, when I, like I said, I had hair down to my butt until the late 90s when I had to go on holiday. I didn't have to go on holiday. I went on holiday to France, south of France. Uh, and it was a billion degrees. And I thought, I'm not taking a four and a half, five foot long ponytail because so, I'll just, no. So I went to the hairdressers and said, right, it's time for a haircut. I need, it's going to be hot. I just need it short. And she went, what do you want to do with the ponytail? Because it was tied back at the time. So what, what do you want to do with the ponytail? I said, what do you mean? And she went, well, there it is. What do you want to do with it? And I'm like, oh, you've cut it. Went, yeah, it's too late now. <laughs> I've still got it. It's in a drawer in the front room. <laughs> I brought it home like, she said, do you want to keep it? I'm like, um, okay. And I brought it home to show mum a fox. And keep in mind, of course, I went, I went out with hair down to my butt. And when I walked back in, I had a number, a number two cut. Literally, you know, a prisoner haircut. And Mama Fox didn't notice for about 20 minutes. She's like, something different about you. What is it? I'm like, hello. Now, that was funny. Uh, I, I didn't even get the... I'm being an idiot, right? I didn't even get the thing out, did I? All right, let's try again. Uh, so, yeah, so the, I've still got that ponytail. It's in a drawer in the front room. <laughs> it's just, beautiful locks, as, as pretty now as they were then. Yes. Unfortunately, I, did, I have tried growing it back over the years because sometimes I miss having long hair and a ponytail and stuff. Uh, and I have I have occasionally tried to grow it back. But the difficulty is that nowadays, of course, my my, my hairline is a lot further back than it was last time I had a big long ponytail. <laughs> yeah, I can't really pull it off anymore. When I used to have a normal person's fringe, I used to have a big long ponytail down to my butt. And I used to have a, uh, a white streak. Because I've got my mousy brown hair. I used to have a white streak right down the center of the fringe. So it was like it'd be on the left. And, if I had the hair parted down the middle, it'd be on the left and right hand side. If I had my hair down, it would be on the left, right hand side. Uh, and yeah, so I try growing it back every now and then. Because sometimes I'll have a dream at night and I'll have long hair and a dream. But oh, I remember having long hair. It was brilliant. Of course, the reality is you have long hair, you just look like, you just look homeless. <laughs> so I've tried it a few times over the years since then it's, it's never really worked out I've given up now I've, my fringe is too far away from my forehead or rather my fringe is too far back from my you know eye, eyebrows and things to, to make long hair I just look like a failed Genesis audition member so, no Genesis yeah Genesis I don't know I just look like a failed Genesis audition honest mm -hmm. so dad tells us of his crippling medical condition and somehow we just all start talking about hair i don't really know how that happened sorry dad <laughs> yeah just there so uh, okay too much self-abuse the nuns are right you know you should listen to the nuns when they told you it's too much self-abuse uh, it's a lump with a jelly-like feel Ooh. Sounds tasty. It's a lump with a jelly-like feel. Dave! 
What am I doing now? I was getting. Oh, I need a tiny one, don't I? I think the actual side of these, the side vents on this barrel is actually already drilled out. I shall find out. Whoop. Um, I'll widen it a little bit. I used to have a short, shaggy bob. I donated the tail to Locks of Love for cancer wigs. Well, that's a good idea. I mean, my ponytail's been sat in a drawer for 30 years. 96, 98, 2008, 22 years. Give it a wash, it'd be all right, wouldn't it? It's still there in the drawer. Just, it's, it's, if I remember right, it's actually still got the bubble on the end. <laughs> what do you want to do with this ponytail? What do you mean? With this one? Oh! Yeah, no, we're going back now. It's on my left hand and I'm right-handed, says Dad. That's weird, then. Yeah, live stream surgery, there's a thing. So anyway, Dad's saying basically he's not doing a stream today because his, 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 his pendulous orb is, not give, is giving him some grief. So take it easy, Dad. I'm going to drink a lot of alcohol. Will that work? It tends to work for me. Raging model. I'm under orders for another Biscoff drip cake. Drip cake for work next week. This is the problem. You see, if you make a beautiful cake that everybody wants, you're going to have to make it again. Uh, my stepmom's niece is a survivor. Is my former, as is my former boss. I assume you're in a, a cancer, a recovered cancer patient. So, yep. Good on you for donating that. Right, I need to widen this little barrel because it's not quite wide enough. Now, you remember how this works? Take your barrel. You can't see it because it's 100 miles away, but it's not quite in the center. That's not the barrel. Uh, it's not quite in the center. So I'm just going to widen the hole here, the opening, so it looks more centered. Now, it won't be a nice, clean tube. It'll obviously be a bit rough in there and it'll have a slope to it but it doesn't matter once it gets a dark uh, wash on the inside to darken the interior you won't see it'll just look like a barrel there we go plus it's a death guard weapon anyway so it's not going to be in pristine condition is it they don't maintain the weapons that's the other thing uh, death guard don't maintain the weapons they don't care there we go so we get that off there a little tiny touch of the extra thins just to smooth off all those knife marks There we go. Massive, great, big hole in that barrel. That's fine. Looks rough and ready, but then it'll be painted to look rusty and, and broken anyway. Cool. Uh, wow, quarter to five, and I haven't even done one guy yet. Uh, right. So we have those two bits done. I need to glue that on there, and that's the backpack that goes on there. Roger, attaching now. I think we'll glue them onto the base first, though. Uh, oh, should we glue on the th tharm? T tharm that goes on to angle like that t there. There's no cloak that I need to worry about being able to paint. That's cool. I can get to all of that, I think, quite easily when I'm painting him. So we'll get this glued on first. <laughs> Uh, Phil Lewis says, my eldest son was drinking cloudy apple juice once and I told him it looked just like what came out of the cyst on my neck. He never drank cloudy apple juice again. Should I feel same? Shame. Uh, just no point. There's no harm in injecting a little bit of real life to people. Don't ever hide the truth from, from children. They need to know that the real world is a harsh and bitter place. Unforgiving. Like the old joke never forget every day to tell someone you love them i'll start that again because uh, i forgot it halfway through always take time to tell someone that you love them but then when you've said that shout it back at them again in german very loudly because real life is a terrifying and scary place something like that i think i killed it let's just move on from that it clearly was funnier than that when i remembered what it was There we go, so that's that glued on. 
again, that wonder of the Death Guard armor is that you always get a, a seam line or a mold line. In fact, it's a seam line down the middle of the pauldron. But because their armor is rusted and corroded, you get the glue splodging out. It's just kind of, it just kind of blends in. Okay. Afternoon all with Dave headbutting the pavement and Dad overusing the wrist. What are the old people on the group doing to their health? It's beyond hope. Uh, just it doesn't really matter what we do because we're old. Everything breaks, even if you try not to break it. Now I broke my toe trying. To, I broke my toe trying to cut the bramble. So uh, we just we just with age comes ineptitude. With great power comes great responsibility. With great age comes great ineptitude. That's why Paul will always joke that Bramble is my arch nemesis. My, my war stories are when I'm fighting plants. I was literally just like, you know, cutting some brambles back from the back of the pond. And I just slipped on a, on a piece of, on a wet stone. My foot slipped. I broke my toe and it was like, ah, 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 ah. So yeah, plants suck. Bramble sucks even more. I hated, until that point, I hated Ivy the most. I have a thing about Ivy. I hate Ivy. Ivy needs to burn in hell. But after that little tussage with some bramble, yeah, bramble's not right on the shit list now. Uh, just found Volterol, gonna give that a go. Yeah, not orally, Dad. It's not a drink. You can't drink. <laughs> At least try and, you know, mix it with some, or cut it with some vodka or something first. <laughs> Uh, I hope you're actually making a point with your doctor though, to go and get it sorted out. Don't just sit and grin and bear it. Do actually, you know, make sure you get it sorted out. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Modeler, over three days, I had three injuries from work. Wow. You would have loved it, Andrew. I did about 25. Huh? Oh, this is him falling off the scooter. This is Dave. I did about 25 something on my, 25 inches on my face. I don't know what that means. Uh, I'm here to steal bollard with the top of my head. I'm glad I bought the cycling helmet now. Yes. Dave, there are more speeds on that thing rather than just fast. Next time, slow for the corners. Scaly's dad says, tonsils have gone. No, it must be working then. <laughs> it's when they go warm, you have to get worried. Uh, very, very kind super chat there. From, you can see it there from the Raging Modeler saying spoot two pound super chat. Thank you very much, Raging Modeler. Thank you very much, Adam. Very, very kind of you. Even though you even sent me like gumplers and everything. I thank you very much, Lee. It'll come up in about. Oops. Three, two, one. Now. 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 I give up. Now. <sighs> I need to have a look and see what the, the delay. There we go. Oh, it takes like. Th oh, I know why. I know why. I'm wondering why it takes so long to trigger it. It's because, of course, um, YouTube by default is on a delay. Where's his head? Is there? Uh, YouTube by default. So when you watch YouTube, you're watching it with like a thirty-second delay. So I'm assuming that obviously the chat I've got open here on my iPad is on the YouTube page. It's literally the live chat, which is instantaneous for me. I think you guys get the chat instantaneously as well. So that's instantaneous. That's fine. Uh, but my streaming software, when it gets the data from YouTube, of course, it gets it with the 30 second delay. So. Well, thank you very much for that, Raging Modeler. Thanks, buddy. Very kind of you. I know, but speed is king, says Dave, uh, much of that model. Yeah, but having all your own teeth is also king. I remember those days. I got sanitizing chemical in my eye, trapped a nerve, possible my sciatic nerve, and then got splashed by oil, which burnt a lot. Yeah, you, I told you, mate. Those, those special massage parlors, you don't want to work there. They're special, but not in a good way. Right, time to put this guy on the base. Okay, so you know what we're doing now? Attaching a dude to a base, it's thick, stodgy glue time. Thick, stodgy glue times. I shall glue him there like that. I'm going to leave space at the front, though, for the little nurgling. Uh, 
not quite stuck on properly. I pulled him up too soon. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Ground, ground, ground. He's not actually on the base properly either. Yeah. Any of you out there going to get Microsoft Flight Simulator? Anybody, any budding pilots out there? I was thinking I might get it when it comes out on Xbox uh, at some point. But then I've watched people play it and thought, no, <laughs> maybe not. It's, I don't think it, it, it... I can play Elite Dangerous on my Hotus stick. I don't think I'll be having any good at Flight Simulator because it's far too realistic. Also, it'd be like a million pounds. Any of you guys out there playing it? How, what you, if you are, what are you playing it on? Have you got a HOTUS? Have you got just on your normal controller? What are, you, what are you using to play? Some of the HOTUS setups are insane that you can pay a fortune for. I mean, my little HOTUS, uh, Thrustmaster HOTUS X, T HOTUS X or something, it's the only one that works with the Xbox. It's like 50, 60 quid. And it's already a bit knackered. The, the potentiometers in the joystick kind of, it, it's got a lot of drift really quickly cheap stuff but that's just a cheap one you can buy them for like hundreds of pounds it's like wow wow that's very expensive mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now if i put this little nurgling on there i'm gonna have to because i can't really glue him on afterwards but can i get to yeah let's just get him on there i'll figure out painting him later i'll worry about getting the brush around to paint his butt and things later on i'm sure it'll be fine what's the worst that can happen Oops. Get him on there. Maybe not that far, but it's actually hard to get him on there because it's hard to actually get my hands round the back of him to move him around. There we go. Yeah, I can I can get that painted up. I always take a, a certain approach. Being a lazy model maker, I always take a certain approach that is, there's always some situations where you can't get to paint something. But quite often that means not only can you not get in there to paint it, nobody can get in there to see it. So sometimes if, you, if, you, if you've got a, a figure and you, you're stressing about, I can't get underneath here to paint this bit or the other bit, <laughs> Like the likelihood is like under there to get to the chain mail that's under his crotch area. The likelihood is people are only ever going to see it from that angle. So if I can't quite get in there to see it, to paint it, it's probably going to be fine. Nobody's ever going to know anyway. Uh, I've been thinking about it on Xbox, says Dad at Scaly Models. Uh, I don't, if they do bring it to consoles, I think they will. I think they'd be stupid not to because it's a flagship game and they need it to sell consoles. Um, I think they're probably only going to bring it to X, to Series X. I don't think they'll bring it to Xbox One and One X. Just purely because I think it's struggling. People are struggling to run it now on top end PCs. <laughs> and I think it'll be when it does. If it does go on to Series X, it'll run it kind of how does he go on the shoulder here is he just randomly plonked on the shoulder there we go it'll uh when people are oh, i see when it goes into console i think even on the series x i think it'll probably run on mediumish setting type settings so i think to go on the xbox one i think that might be a bit of a stretch to be perfectly honest I don't think you'd be playing it on like you know potato settings i think for that i don't think that would work is he attached somehow or does he just hold on there with the grace and goodwill i think he goes on somehow uh one foot on the horn there we go one foot on the horn do 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 Uh, almost fitted. I think it goes like that. And there we go. That'll do. Let's get a little bit of glue around him there. Yeah. Hold this steady for a minute while he stays in place and sets. He's not joined on it by a lot. And I will admit, I don't like 
he's got the the little sort of smoking sensor they always have these little sensors where there's like smoke and stuff coming out of them it's not actual smoke it's like fumes and things and i'm never that keen on that because they're a paint to paint it's like on mortarian you get the exhaust on the back of mortarian's backpack and for most of them they have the smoke that you can glue in it's like the plastic molded smoke effect i just didn't put them in i just drilled out the hole in the top of the in the top of the exhaust and left it because it's going to look much better without them than it is having them on there and half painted but he's got some sensors on on chains that he's swinging around and they have it and i couldn't get that off so unfortunately i'm stuck with some of that right and there you go that is our death guard plague marine championi who took forever to make awesome there you go that's him done that's issue 69 <laughs> yeah I shall mark it off as done. Where's my pen of marking things off? Hang on. Oh. 69. It's a very old joke. Uh, issue 69. He is done. See, I even put a little smiley in that smiley face next. <laughs> Ooh. Matron. There you go. Uh, next is the sector mechanicus crane the next thing i have here now there's no way i'm going to get this built in an hour to be perfectly honest mm -mm -mm. let's see i could probably get the main big components built I think what I'll do is I'm not going to get all the bits off the sprue and start clean them. I think I'll just get like those two bits off and clean them up and stick them together and I'll, I'll get bits off as I need them. Otherwise, I'm going to have to with a big bag of stuff and nothing to do with it. Quick look at uh, the chat. Do, 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 do. I was thinking of getting it, says Stew Pop, the flight sim. Uh, hoping to get flights in 2020 soon, says Phil Lewis. Dave says, no, been watching Dad watching some bloke on YouTube playing it in real time. I'll wait till it's on, steel, on sale on Steam in about four years. Super has the old version. Don't need a flight sim, I would just, I just want to ah, start again. Don't need a flight sim, I just wind she who farts in bed and she chucks me out the window. There you go. Never wind up the missus, it's never a good idea. Right, so... Do I need any of these parts off this brew before I get it out? Do, uh, no. No, I think they're all a sprue. So I think we can we can make a start on it anyway. I'm not gonna get much done probably. Sector Mechanicus Crane! <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was looking at it and it's I probably will get it eventually one day, but it's gonna be very expensive. And I probably won't get it, to be honest. I like Elite Dangerous because it's not too complicated. And it's not going to cost me billions of pounds. So I want B13, 12, 21, 12, hang on. I want 11 and 12, first of all. I think. Let's just get the bits off. Get your bits off! I want B12, B11. Okay, let me get the tools of removing. Uh, anybody? Oh, I tell you what has been really disappointing. Talking of video games, you know that I like me some Elite Dangerous, uh, and they announced that the next big update next year sometime will include Space Legs or Elite Feet, which is the ability to actually walk around first person, which people have been asking for forever. And everybody's really, really excited for it. They're like, oh, yeah, we're getting space legs. We're getting elite feet. Yeah, it's going to be brilliant. Walk around your ship. Walk around space stations. Walk around on planets. It's going to be atmospheric landing. It's going to be absolutely the dog's noonums. And everybody was really, really super stoked. And then in the interview, they went, yeah, we're, we're not actually doing walking around your ship. We're thinking about it. We're looking into it. Or space stations. Or anything like that. Just really, you can walk around on a on an atmospheric planet. It's like, oh, 
So it's basically gone from everybody's really excited to, oh, you mean you're just basically giving us an alternative to the SRV vehicle? It just happens to be that you're walking around on legs. So it's gone from being the most exciting thing in Italy ever to everybody is just like, oh, that sounds like garbage. That's it. I'm going to give you a Ferrari. <gasps> Brilliant. Yeah, except it's not a Ferrari. It's like a 2001 Nissan Almera with no trim or extras. And it's also broken and a bit rusty. And somebody may have died on the back seat and there'll be a bit of a stain. But other than that, it's a Ferrari. So that's major, major. Dis and the thing, the thing that's annoying everybody at the minute is uh, B20. I want B20. Is that one of the things they've said is that they're, th they're looking into things like walking around ships. And they're looking into things like walking around space stations. And people have been like, hang on a minute. You've been working on this expansion for like three years. And you're telling us you've just started to think about it won't be available in time for release, but we're, we're looking into it. And you're just starting to think about it now. That's not awesome. Definitely not awesome. Right, how do these bits go on now? It doesn't make it clear. That goes together like this. Big ass old engine block. And then B20 and 21. Oh, I see. They go under there. Ah. Doesn't matter which one goes where. Yeah. But his laws, that's his initial theory. Oh, I see it goes like that. Oh, okay, there we go. That goes on that. Yeah, it doesn't matter which is which. I'm just muttering to myself, ignore me. Yeah, so it's gone from like the most exciting update that everybody's been waiting for to now, like everybody's like, oh, I'm not excited now. Forget it. I'm not buying this. Because people have literally said, you know, we want to be able to walk around on our ships. We want to be able to walk around space stations and everything else. Now it's like, yeah, you can't do any of that. Okay. And they've really like shot themselves in the foot because there was such an absolute buzz for this extension expansion or this this you know the new thing and they've just killed it completely they really have just killed it completely to the point where everybody's like well i don't really care now in that case because it's not just an expansion it's like a basically a, a game it costs as much as buying the game kind of one of those expansions like the horizons one it's basically a new version of the game you pay full price for uh, which is a significant investment and if all you get for that is uh, okay you can instead of driving across the surface of a planet you can now just walk across it but it's still just a hood display and it's just basically an SLV without wheels because it's just your spacesuit yeah nobody really cares about that well, there's more to it they haven't said yet, but they really need to because they've managed to basically just we on their own campfire, as it were, urinate on their own chips in, in a massively spectacular failure way. It's quite impressive. It's kind of the same effect as, you know, showing Halo Infinite for the first time and everybody went, yeah, oh... Same kind of effect. But the fact that they've been working on it for three years and they're saying, yeah, we're thinking about doing, we're looking into if you can walk around your ship and you've had three years, what we've been doing for three years. If all we're going to get is a different SRV hood and plants, is that it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, that was Dev Diary 1. There's another eight months before release. Anything can change. There's beyond hope. Well, they have said they're thinking about, they're looking into it. It's like, if they've been working on it for three years if there was like walking around your ship that would be there it was an interview with polygon i think where they actually said that wasn't the video the video said nothing at all it was useless it was an actual proper sitting down talking interview with i think polygon or uh, the verge or something and they said we are thinking about walking around your ship damn man Now, I must admit, one of my pet peeves with these Warhammer things is scenery items like this. I hate to get rid of the mold lines because it's just a right pain in the bum. 
because they're everywhere. Never quite sure. Is that actually supposed to be that? It even, doesn't even look like a mold line. It looks like it's supposed to be there. I shall remove it nonetheless. What is the worst that can happen? Uh, yeah. Let's get rid of that with the file. Uh, hey, Tommy's in. It's Tommy, not Pip. Hey, Tommy. How you doing, buddy? Tommy, what are you doing on here, says Dave. Watching, why, Dad? Tommy was watching me yesterday when we were doing my, live stream, my gaming live stream. Because, although you weren't there, uh, Dave, because you're rubbish, Tommy was watching me play Skyrim. Hello, Mama Fox. Hey, Mama Fox. Hello. Chinese? Yes. There we go. That's our dinner sorted out. <laughs> I wasn't sure what we could have for dinner, so you know what we're going to have? We're going to have Chinese. There you go. Done. Yes, Tommy was watching my stream yesterday, Dave. Unlike some people around here who weren't watching my stream. I have none of this hours at work nonsense. Mama Fox in the house, says Paul Tomaso. Yeah, we weren't sure what to have for dinner. So uh, I'm on the assumption that Mama Fox hadn't got off her backside and gone and chosen something from the freezer to defrost. Like a meat product of some sort. Because I'll often say to her, right, I'm doing a stream now. You go and pick something out of the freezer and defrost it for three hours and then we'll make that when I get down. Yeah, on the assumption that she hadn't done that. Because she's probably carried away watching Heartbeat or something. Yeah. Or on a Facebook. I usually assume she hasn't done that. Chinese? Yeah. Uh, don't worry about the mold lines on the bottom. You'll never see that section when it is all glued, says Mordraka. Oh, interesting. I like people that speak to my utter abject laziness. Let me let me look at the leg end and see what the images show. Uh, oh, I see. So that goes like that. Why, yes. I see what you mean. You will never see these mod lines. However, however, there is a there is a, a caveat with that. For me, at least. And that is, like I said before, this is like a half and half for me and George. And we don't yet know what's happening with the scenery items. George is getting all the Space Marines. I'm getting all the Death Guard. And we don't know who's getting the scenery items. So, for the Death Guard, I can cut corners up the wazoo because they're for me and I don't really care. If I, if I cover a seam line with a bit of plastic card or, you know, leave a seam line underneath some things here and there, yeah, I don't really mind. It's only ever me going to know it and so on and so on. But for stuff that George might have, for George's Space Marines, I'm going to do everything I can to make him look as kick-ass as possible because he's financed the project big chunk of it it's his financial support that's made this entire thing possible so he's going to get the best space means ever that i can do and if that means getting rid of all the seam lines so be it but the challenge is i don't know what to do with the with the furniture and stuff like this so yeah i think you're all right you're never actually going to see it i'm being a little bit stickly with the mold lines on the on the scenery items just on the off chance that george gets them but I think you are right, you're never going to see that bit underneath, so I can probably skip that, at the very least. I got that. Now I know I'm not... Kind of almost pointless sanding this bit right now, because I'm going to have glue splooging up out of it, but get rid of the nub. I'll clean it up in a bit when the, when the glue's dried. Uh, that bit there, let's get rid of that. Dad, come down to my room, please. Thank you, says Ted. There, uh, says Ted. Ted. There's Tommy. I like that. People talking within the same house via chat on my stream. I like this idea. If you need to have a conversation with someone in your own house, then please come and watch my stream and do it in live chat because it helps me make money. <laughs> uh, Cy Reynolds is crying and turning in his sleep or something. Yeah. He'd be uh, rotating vigorously about his axis right now. Talking about not filling in seam lines. He'd be oscillating violently. As long as he's not being a nuisance, says Dave. Absolutely not. He's just chilling out and watching. He's telling us about his Minecraft uh, buildings yesterday. Uh, 
my dad had a disaster today, says Tommy. Yes, he did. He fell on his face. Like a spoon. He had a spoon moment and fell on his face. Do 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 with the mold lines. Has he broken anything yet? Says Mayhem. No, hey Mayhem. I ain't broken out nor nothing either. I don't break things. I unexpectedly rearrange some of the molecular structure of certain objects for as yet unknown beneficial purposes. Probably. Or I create improvisation opportunity uh, scenarios. Yeah, I did enough. I worked with enough pointless managers over the years to learn how to say nothing by saying lots of words. You work in call centers for 20 years. You meet a lot of punty nonsense managers. And you know what? In them days, Dilbert was the truth. Dilbert was fact. Despite the fact that Scott Adams now is not somebody you want to actually particularly lord. But, gone off the rails a bit. But, in those days, Dilbert was the dog's doodars. And it was absolutely accurate. Because I was convinced that Scott Adams worked in my office. <laughs> Absolutely convinced. Mm -hmm. Thinking about Chinese food now. Nim, 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 nom, 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 nom. I think tonight will be. I've changed me. I've changed me regular up a little bit. You know, my regular used to be wonton soup with shumai spring rolls uh, and uh, beef Japanese udon. I've changed it a bit. I tried their pad thai. Ooh, ooh. So my, my regular at the minute is wonton soup with a portion of shumai and uh, some vegetable spring rolls. And the, I know I'm on a low fat diet, but I'm allowed to treat occasionally, I think. And pretty much I've decided. Um, and then the main course is beef, uh, beef thai, beef pad thai. It's great. You get it on the plate, right? Like when I have my Japanese udon, you get it out of the tray and you put it on the plate and it goes bleh, and it's just big fat noodles that you can oh with the chopsticks. Oh fantastic. The pad thai, you get it out of the tray, splonk, it's like a brick. And you get your chopsticks in there to break it all up. And the noodles just kind of go, We're all a single unit. We're gonna move on mass. And it's like <laughs> you can you have to spend ages kind of separating it all out because otherwise you put your chopsticks in there and you get a blob of noodles and stuff like this thick. And now I'm really hungry. And they do the softest beef you can imagine. Oh, if you're not in the UK, you won't know. But Chinese chip shop beef or Chinese takeaway beef is not. It's not like normal beef. It's delicious, but it, it has more the texture of. It's weird. It doesn't have any bite to it. It's soft and squishy. It's like little bits of beef. It's like the tenderest beef. It's, it's probably cheap, nasty stuff. But it's like it's almost like tofu but with actual made of beef and oh it's so nice so you can quite happily just wolf it down there quickly so yeah oh beef pad thai oh i'm starving now uh, what have i missed anyway says mayhem uh, uh ted's uh, ted God. dave says loads andy fox made a man Das ist ein Mann gefahrten mit seinem tiny fellow und so und also tiny fellow. Two t that's, technically, that's three. That's three figures. Technically, I've made three figures because because you've got you you've got the you've got the champion and you've got a nurgling and another nurgling. So that's th I've done three figures so far today. I've decided uh, because they dip it in cornstarch before they cook it. Says Edward Leonard. I don't know. Sounds delightful. Uh, that's where, well, that's the shading done now to wait for the shades to drown off to edge highlights, says Mordraka. Mm, 
B3 says we're apparently having a Domino's Veggie Supreme with extra chicken pizza as her indoors doesn't fancy anything that we bought at the supermarket yesterday. Oh, Domino's is so overpriced. <gasps> so I used to love Domino's pizza, uh, but 20 quid for a pizza is kind of, it's ridiculous. There's a place a couple of roads down from where I am uh, that does like pizzas and stuff. And it's, it's like a typical Turkish kebab type place. You know, they've got kebabs and burgers and pizza and it's nothing spectacular. But they do pizzas for like three pound. And they're not deep dish. You know, you don't get a stuffed crust with sausage in the crust. I'll give you that. But they're so nice. They're so nice. Oh, because oh, oh. you can have whatever topping you want. And I'm not a big fan of not deep dish pizzas, but these are so nice. They can do slightly thicker crust if you want. But it's like you might have, you know, like chicken and ground beef and peppers and anchovies and mushrooms and sweet corn. And if you want pineapple, you can have pineapple. Uh, and oh, God. And they just. Oh. And they make it right there and then. It takes them like two minutes. And I've got to say, for £3, £3.50, <gasps> you'd never buy Domino's again or Pizza Hut. It's just overpriced tap. I mean, I, I will admit, I do like Domino's Pizza. This is the frustrating thing. I like the pizza. I used to love their tuna pizzas. They don't do them anymore. Fascists. But, you know, I like their low-fat cheese. was really nice. And they're sort of, you know, uh, whatever it was called. And their stuffed crust. But 18 to 20 quid for a pizza. Uh, no. That's, that's more than you pay for an entire meal in some restaurants. You know, we might, Mama Fox and I will pay that for an entire Kentucky take up for both of us. So, no. No. Uh, Domino's is all right. Papa John's here is in Canada sucks. I found the small family owned pizza places a lot better. Uh, yeah, Papa John's is terrible. There used, to be, there used to be a Papa John's right around the corner from my house, literally. Um, but they weren't that great. And apparently the guy that runs it is a bit, uh, well, let's just not go there. Uh, or used to run it, I should say. Uh, Domino, yeah, I do like Domino's pizzas. I just don't think they're worth twenty quid. No pizza is worth twenty pound when you can pay three, four, five pound. Because keep in mind, I don't know the exchange rate, but when I'm saying a pizza cost me twenty quid to you American guys, that's like twenty five to thirty dollars. Would you pay thirty dollars for a pizza? I wouldn't. And I bet none of them, none of them, come with. Tony Cacheri's Creole instant original Creole seasoning. None of them. None of them. See, Craftsman, he doesn't eat Domino's. Also, the Craftsman doesn't have a microwave, but there you go. Uh, do, 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 do. I know there's no stopping him when he gets the bit between his teeth, says Butcher that model. Is this me having a rant again? Uh, I've lost them. No, they got lost twice. Took forever to get here, and I literally watched them drive past my place like three times. Oh, is Nim having delivery problems? Oh, okay. Did you get all the right food there? I've lost track of the chat now. I don't want to spend ten minutes catching up. Uh, the meat feast pizza with Donnie on his awesome stuff. Uh, 30, 30 pound at Domino's and get 50% off bargain. So spend 30 pounds on a pizza that costs two pound 50 to make and you get it for 15 quid. Mm, not sure about the deal there. You're still paying 15 quid. <laughs> then again, I suppose 30 pound at Domino's, that's probably like a pizza and a half. Yeah. I don't know if that, even that's a deal. Because thirty pound, that's you're paying fifteen pound for maybe two little pizzas, but I can still get one from around the corner from me for like six quid, and they're just as nice, just as nice. And the place around the corner actually does things like anchovies, which Domino's doesn't seem to want to do anymore, uh, and a tuna, which Domino's around here doesn't want to do anymore. I love tuna. I love anchovies. Oh. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Ah. Papa John's is ranked. Last one we ever had. The cheese was off. Used to go to Godfather's, a local place that has won awards, but they changed hands and it isn't as good. 
when you rub peanut butter on his gums, Andy, we shall try and get Mum Fox to do it when he's just... What? I have no idea what you're talking about. No idea. I've lost track of that. I'm not even going to try and catch up. I uh, don't like the crust on Papa John's. I don't like Papa John's full stop. It's horrible stuff. That is real processed nonsense, that is. Papa John's. Right, so... We're going to have to glue this little puppy together. And there'll be some squidgy squidgy. Uh, because there's great big seam all the way down there. Massive, great big honking seam line that... You, I'm not even going to try and... A bit like I did on the little servo hauler. That is like a massive seam line that's in a, in a recess shape like that. There's no way i can going to fill that and keep it looking mint. And keep that kind of slightly concave shape. So what I'm going to do instead is do my usual foxy foxy thing. I'm just going to, I'm not even going to try and fill that bit. I'm going to use plastic card to put a structure over it. Because filling a seam line is not always the only option that you've got. Full stop. There is nothing wrong with getting creative about how you're filling a gap. There's absolutely nothing wrong at all with creating. It depends on the subject. If you're making a shiny sports car, then you, you have to fill the gap. If you're making a super sleek fighter plane, you have to fill the gap. If you're making a sci-fi nonsense or some like industrial tech like this, you can just add greebles. You can add greebles, add surface details that cover up the gaps. You'll see on the latest Falcon episode when it comes out in the next day or two, how I actually managed to cover up some of the uh, gaps in the kit with added greebles. Now it's not strictly canon. I've added little details to the Falcon that aren't actually on the Falcon, but you know what? It doesn't matter. They're so tiny, nobody cares. And it looks good. It looks it looks like it fits. It looks canon. So yeah, there's nothing wrong at all with adding surface detail to hide imperfections. That's not an invalid tactic at all. So I'm gonna squash that there. I know this isn't underneath and you can't see it, but because I can easily squash it like that, I don't have a problem. When it comes to this later on, we can just sand that back. The, the bead of glue that's come out will quite happily break this peg. <coughs> the bead of glue that will come out will quite happily sand back with no effort whatsoever. And that will be no problem at all. So, yes, I don't need to worry about that underneath bit because you're never going to see it. But it's going to be so effortless to, to clean that up once it's squidged together. I may as well. Right, can I not get anything wide enough to grip these bits now? That's not going to happen. I need more things to grab. I need more big pegs. Big peg. Big bad peg. Any more? Yeah, I've got more. Right, so that's fine. So yeah, this bit on the top, I think I'll just have to wing it and cover that with plastic card. Greebles. We'll have to somehow co com uh, sort of construct some kind of greebling to go on top of that. I haven't got a clamp big enough to get round there. But it does want to be pulling apart again. Let me see if I can get another peg on that round bit. Hang on. Yes. Power. There we go. The power of clampiness. Have we got any more pegs? Have we got any more pegs? Yes, I've got one left. Hang on. Peg time. Activate peg method. There you go. <laughs> I've clamped the crap out of that. That can go to the side. Mama Fox will be fine, Andy. She's very sprightly. I don't know what you're talking about. I've missed half of that chat and I'm, I'm not going to try and get into it. Uh... Mayhem. By, uh, by sprightly, you mean bash him on the head with the saucepan. <laughs> she could, except she can't quite reach where the saucepans go. <laughs> Only I can reach those. Peg method, the pegatologist. A little bit of pegatology. Yeah, so we'll cover that little gap with a little bit of plastic card, a little bit of greeble of some sort. I won't get to do it now, probably because I need that to sit there for 10 or 15 minutes. But I'll simply trim out some plastic card shapes. They're symmetrical around a central axis. 
that just look like a, a plate like a, a, a piece of plating that kind of fit with the overall design and that will be fank spanktacular hair in there why is it that's a head hair i haven't had hair that long for years is it... I know all these little eyelashes and things. And you, it can't just be me that suddenly finds like a load of eyelashes on his workbench and stuff. It can't be me, surely. It can't just be me. Yeah, so Chinese tonight. Yay. I was very lucky because we had, a, we had a, a, a Chinese takeaway that I used to adore that did Japanese beef noodle soup uh, and udon which I love Udon. And we were very lucky that one of the local ones started doing that. I was like, oh, so we used them for like good five, six, seven years. It was amazing. Didn't realise what good five or six, seven years. And then they just disappeared. They just vanished. They just went. Suddenly the phone line didn't work and they were gone. I was like, oh, and I was distraught because normal Chinese takeaway food is just bland and boring to me. It's, it's not interesting. I like the proper interesting stuff like, you know, the Thai stuff and the, bit of a Japanese udon style things most of them are just like sweet and sour king prawn that's a chicken egg fried rice curry rice and chicken they're just boring like cliche stuff but then I was very lucky that I found this other place that does udon I'm like oh please don't ever close ever and ironically they they were actually only a few rows away and they've been there for long long decades I didn't even know they were there I could walk round to get the food if I actually could be bothered. So I'm very happy now I found this place. Just need to make sure they never ever close down for any reason at all, ever. Ever. With the ever. ever. Right, so I can't glue those on. That was curly, that's not an eyelash, it was a head hair. Uh, Mayhem says, look at the spankularity. Swig of water. Uh, can I glue anything else together while we're waiting? Um, We've got half an hour. Yeah, why not? I'll just move this little sort of starfish over here. You go over there. If you hear a ping in a minute and me go snap, it's yeah, it's, it's pinged off. Okay, step two we need. Uh, we need B14, 6, 22, and 22. Okay. We need 14. Fourteen, which is a brain, is a bonce. Fourteen, now you say like that. <gasps> There's flash on this sprue. I've never seen flash on a Warhammer kit before. That's how you know this hasn't been made in Nottingham. This is made by some strange imposters. There's also an eyelash on this sprue already. This has been made by the others because I've never seen flash on a Warhammer kit before. There's a whole load of eyelashes on this. I hope they're mine and not somebody else's. Uh, B22 times 2, which is the little sort of that little semicircle thing here. And we're snipping and cutting. Yeah, that's it. Switch to you. Now, uh, as Dad said, oh, I need to also B5. And B6. Okay. Uh, as Dad said earlier on, he's not doing a stream tonight because of herties. He's got his herties. So I hope that sorts itself out, sir. Dad, soon. Go and see a doctor tomorrow. Uh, but I'm not sure who's streaming tonight at 9 o'clock. At uh, 9 o'clock. Half 8. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock even. Because it's, uh, it's Warhamster Sunday. It's our friend Chris at Gross Models. But I'm not sure if it's Chris doing his normal Warhamster stream, or if it's Ted doing his Baneblade build, because I know Ted couldn't do it last week. And I don't know if he's doing it this week. So it'll either be Ted at 9 or Chris at 8 p.m. Either way, just, you know, hang around. So it'll either be gross models, or it'll be skipper scale models. I don't know. Uh, first curly hairs, now a starfish. This channel has lost standards. Wait, I actually had standards? I, I deny that vehemently. I don't think I could ever say they had standards. A bit like the Death Guard stuff. Uh, this is like knackered old industrial machinery. 
So again, when I'm cutting these little nubs away, you'll see I'm not being too careful about avoiding gouging the plastic and cutting into it. I don't really care because it's knackered old machinery. It's old cranes and forklifts and stuff. So if it's got a few dings and gouges here and there from my knife, it's fine. It's just part of the weathering. It's part of the, part of the use this machine has had. In my mind, that works perfectly. It is logical, you'll see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, right, uh, I need a knife for that bit. Does this, how does this skull, will this skull just sit? Does it have anything on either side of it? Do I need to clean those bits up is what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Oh no, ah. Excellent. I don't have to worry about the seam lines on these side bits here because this is held in place on those two pegs at the side, so I don't have to worry about that so much other than at the top and the bottom here. Excellent. We're just looking ahead and seeing, you know, do I need to cleave a seam line or is it ever going to be seen? If the answer is no, don't need to re roll. Ted's turn if his internet works, says Chris. Oh, yeah, Ted's internet's been broken. That's why I couldn't do it last week. Is Sky Internet balked? I said to him, "You should get Plusnet, Dad. Plusnet's great. I've had Plusnet for twenty years. They never give me a problem." So you got Sky. Yeah, but he wanted the telly as well. You say. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, they weren't high standards, but they existed. I never had standards. I did vehemently deny that. Twice I've used the word vehemently now on telly. Now, talking to customer service about what happened, I'll most likely get some sort of credit applies to my account, which is better than nothing, says Nim. Oh, this is for the for the food delivery. Yes. We ordered a KFC the other day, and they, they messed up the size. I ordered two lots of chips, one gravy, and one southern rice. And we got one lot of chips... One gravy, a southern rice, and something else. I think it might have been two southern rices. And I was like, you know what? That's fine. I don't mind the rice. It'll do. It's all food. It all comes out the same way 12 hours later. It doesn't really matter. Unless it's kiwi fruit, in which case you sue them into oblivion because kiwi fruit is vile and evil. Kiwi fruit's not even food. There's very few things I will not eat, and kiwi fruit is one of them. Pretty much kiwi fruit and anything with a face, I'm not really going to entertain eating. Other than that, it's a fair game. I'll never forget that my, my dad's wake many, many years ago. My dad's wake. I didn't. I wasn't involved in ordering all the food for the wake afterwards, and we sat there in the pub, eating finger food and stuff. We had a wake in a pub, and uh, I'm like, "Oh, what are these little things like? Little, little, we had these little things that look like uh, they look like McDonald's chicken strippers, like little strips of chicken that you can, um, you know, like fridge filler type chicken things." And I'm like, "I'm wolfing these down." I'm like, "Oh, these are nice. What are these?" Uh, and someone's like, oh, it's white bait. I'm like, what's that? You know, it's kind of fish. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I'm eating these things, and then I, I bit one, and, and the batter came off, and it's like a whole fish with a face and everything. And I'm like, oh, there's a face on it. I'm, oh. I can't eat this now. Even though it was delicious, I'm like, I, I can't. Ugh. I didn't know it had a face on it. Gross. Mm -hmm. I, do, 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 do. I think what else to talk about uh, what else has been going on not a lot not a lot been going on here just been busy working on the falcon episode this week and as always real life stuff becoming a right pen in the bum like last six months the right sort of disruption to doing stuff for various real life reasons been quite frustrating that's why i'm you know we're in august and i've not even finished the falcon yet 
because if you remember, my plan was that the Falcon would be finished by, you know, March or April. Get George's Tazabi done, get the Falcon done within a few weeks, and then on to everything else. Yeah, we're now at the end of August, and I'm not even finished the Falcon yet. It's just because of real world stuff is all just getting in the way at the minute. Every time I sit down to do something, it's like, oh, now what? Um, unfortunately, real world stuff has to come first, which is very frustrating. Right. I don't understand why they would make the, the thing at the top of the crane a skull. No reason at all for there to be a skull. And also no reason at all to have an ocular implant on a pretend skull. That's looking forward, because this is the bit where the crane hangs down from here like that with the bit. This is the, whatever you call the bit, the block, where the chain. So why would it need to look forward from like 30 foot up in the air? I don't understand why. Yeah. Why, why, why am I expecting logic from Warhammer Designs? I'm just being incredibly naive there. Uh, do these bits. Nice bit of chainage. Uh, uh, I think this as well might not need to be worried about the edges too much. Let's have a look. Goes on the end of this block. Block and tackle. Oh. oh yes. Again, these bits here, these sides. These are hidden away and like flush to a surface, so I don't need to worry about. I need to get them flat so they fit. But I don't need to get rid of the mold line because that doesn't matter. That way, turn it this way. Do you notice I've got this wonderful mat down? Yeah, I keep sanding stuff off the mat, and I've got bits everywhere. I'm not very organised, am I? I do love this little mat though. And if, if you're watching still, this is the bee's knees. This mat, I love it. It saves so much crap going on my desk. Right, so that's flat. Now I can go into a little hole. Do 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 do. What else can we talk about? Can't think of anything else to talk about now. I am bereft of subjects to talk about. So let's do a chat AMA. Let's do an ask me anything. Ask me anything in chat. Anything you want at all. Any questions. Ideally not to do with model making because that's boring. Any quite No religion, no politics, obviously. That's not going to happen. But just for the last 20 minutes, let's do an AMA. Ask me stuff because I've got nothing else to talk about. And I'm spent. Three live streams every weekend. I'm going to run out of stuff to talk about by the end of it. <laughs> It's pretty much a guarantee. Mm, 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 mm. If you've got a question, ask a question and uh, for other people in chat as well. Join in with the question answering. Ask me anything you want. It doesn't have to be about me. It can be anything. A question about anything. I like science. Science cool. Questions about science are great. Ask me anything. Oh, don't. It's up to you. Uh, while I'm waiting for that, don't forget, of course, uh, if you would like to support this channel and keep me doing this, keep me able to keep doing this, keep me able to keep that. Wow. If you'd like to help support my Learn How to Construct a Sentence Fund. Jesus. Yes, if you'd like to help support the channel and keep me in business. Because this is what I do for a job. This is my living. What I earn through the YouTube is what I earn. Uh, then you can do There's several ways you can do uh, first and foremost of course like and subscribe please do like every video that goes up uh, and make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell and do that for any channel that you enjoy the content always like the videos because it helps the video in the algorithm helps the video go up in the listings and helps that person get more views and therefore yeah helps them out massively yeah, do like and subscribe and hit the bell. But if you'd like to support the channel uh, directly, keep me going, you can do. Uh, you can go to patreon.com forward slash model making guru. There's an address down there on the bottom of the screen. And you can become a Patreon supporter. You'll get access to early access video content and other bits and bobs and benefits. Uh, Add free early access content for, for most patrons. I'll go and check that out if you're not keen on patreon uh you can of course if you wish but just become a, a youtube channel supporter or channel member which there's no link for it but if you look under any of my videos or you go to my channel youtube channel homepage, you'll see a join button 
All you do is click on that and you've got a couple of options there. Again, you're going to get like ad free early access content, depending on which tier you choose. Uh, and on, on YouTube, you get a cool badge for in chat. Uh, and you also get little emoticons. And I will at some point, I keep saying it, I will at some point do some more emoticons. Only a few in there. I just haven't got time at the minute. It takes a long time, but there will be more. But mostly, it's just about getting content ad free early. Nobody likes ads. Uh, other things.